Hi everyone, Woo-hoo. how's it going? Anyways, uh, everyone, I'm joined with Kenny Biddle today. Side eye guy. <laughs> nice. <the> side <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> What's up, everyone? Uh, it's so. So, um, for those who so don't know, Kenny's. Go, go ahead. Go, uh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm just I'm happy. That's all. <laughs> uh, Kenny's like our resident, like professional skeptic. <laughs> he, like, no, he really, really knows his shit. And uh, I'm really like, so I'm going to have other guests coming to join me a little bit later, but I haven't had an opportunity just to have like a sort of one on one with Kenny. So I'm just interested to ask him a few questions. Don't get me wrong. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm not going to be like neglecting the chat. I am going to try and like balance the two because as everyone knows, I am crap with it comes to keeping up with the chat. Uh, so I'm just going to give a quick hello. So excuse me. No, fog my throat. I'm going to give a quick hello to everyone that's here. First off, thanks. Uh, hello and thanks to all of my lovely mods that are here. I see one Elise is there. I'm sure there's others as well. Um, I'll find you. Uh, okay, so I'll okay, get Candy. Yes, hello. Thank you. Uh, Fantasy Publishing, which I've got to say, um, I shared her video that she made about me yesterday. I know it's very self-indulgent of me, but I really did enjoy it. So um, Fantastic Publishing has done, has done a few now where she's uh, done a video on me. She's done a video on Crow. I think she's got some plan. She's done a lot of like, the debunkers in general. Beardo's going to be coming and Mr. Gray, I'm sure. Um, go check our channel out. Ch- channel out. I always find it's like it's a really nice, pleasant, relaxing watch seeing her, uh, watching her stuff. So, um, yeah, thank you very much for making that video. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Cag, how's it going? Glinda Watts, hello. Sarah G, hello. Jackie, hello. Faith, hello. How are you? Uh, Dawn, how's it going? Morning Ray, uh, Rain already sent through. She became a member herself and sent through 15 gifted members. Thank you so, so much. Morning Rain, that is crazy. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Wisdom, hello. Uh, Lisa A, how's it going? Um, see, um, Juniper, hello, how's it going? It's another one of my lovely mods. Uh, CJ, how's it going? Clara Kelly, how's it going? Uh, Dean, another mod of mine, thank you very much for uh, joining. Um, Paranormal uh, Seekers, hello, Weeping Willow Paranormal, hello, uh, Raven, how's it going? <laughs> CRL, hello, Leafy Alex, hello. Michael, hello. Red Raven, hello. Uh, and John, thank you very much for another five gifted members there. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you. Thank you. Ruth, hello. Old Dog, hello. All you guys, like you've all been leaving so many funny comments as well lately. I appreciate that. Uh, you know, in my actual videos, I mean. Okay, right. I'm, I, I could I just have, spend the whole question. time saying hello. Yes. Can I have a question. What does, the, what does the gifted memberships mean? What is that? So they uh, have paid for a month membership and it randomly gives, it dishes out the memberships to anyone who's on the live. I think there's a weird thing where it might be some are on the live and some who have just got off the live. I don't know. It's it's, it's something along those lines. Yeah. Lab 15, how's it going? Um, Yeah. So (laughs) oh, also, guys, um, the, the title of this live isn't, isn't clickbait. There will be a surprise coming a little bit later. I'm very excited to show everyone. Uh, <laughs> but it will be, I'll, I'll, I'm going to save it a little bit later. Everyone, everyone's going to stick around for the surprise. Crow and Judas, blah, blah, blah. blah, blah, blah. What? <laughs> Who so let that guy in here? You like to start off by just by telling like what you do. What I what do I do? Uh, so I am the, my official title is the chief investigator of paranormal claims at the Center for Skeptical Inquiry, um, CSI. Uh, We're based in Buffalo, New York. Uh, My parent company is the Center for Inquiry. And uh, as part of CSI, we put out a magazine called Skeptical Inquiry Magazine, um, which I have uh, a couple issues here. Um, This is what we do. Uh, It's about science. Uh, I take care of paranormal claims. So uh, if, if there's haunted houses or ghost pictures or videos or UFOs or, um, religious mi- miracles and stuff like that, that I can look into and investigate, then I do. Um, 
I also lecture on uh, strategies for solving mysteries. I teach people how I do things, how I do research, how I look into clues and contact people. Um, and then I, I do that across the country, across the states. And uh, I get involved with different groups, try to help improve the quality of their work. I try to help uh, give them some tips and we work together on different things. I do a live show on a uh, Friday nights called the skeptical help bar. And that's pretty much like, like this kind of show right now. It's, it's me. We, we drink, we, we partake in some uh, adult beverages and we talk about skepticism and, and the paranormal and science. And, uh, we learn together and we have fun. So that's me in the nutshell, basically. Do you, do you have like people in that, in your organization that do have beliefs that, uh differ from maybe your own or other people like is there like um a diversity of kind of like opinion and thought when it comes to the paranormal or are you all kind of sit in the same boat of with your level of skepticism so yeah there's there's uh various degrees because it's it's a company that we are for science and reason i mean that's first and foremost um science and reason so it's promoting science um advocacy for science uh, and critical thinking. Um, so it's not all about the paranormal, uh, but you do have a variety of people that have different beliefs um, because we also, in, not everyone is an investigator like me. Um, we have different departments. And a lot of that is like a, like the, the financial stuff, um, accounting and uh, human resources, which all have their own sure. different beliefs. Yeah. yeah. So it's a basic, it's a, it's a company. I mean, it's a regular company. It's just that our, our, we don't have a product except for, we have two magazines. Um, Skeptical Inquirer is more of the science side and then Free Inquiry is more on the secular humanist side, um, which I don't really do too much with, but um, that's our product. And our goal is to promote science and critical thinking out into the world um, as anywhere, any way we can. We also are a nonprofit organization. So mm -hmm. we do work on donations and uh, we depend on the people that we help. So there you oh, go. Oh, awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sorry. <laughs> There's a lot of people that are very, uh, they, seem, they seem to really like the adult beverages that you partake in. So seems to be what... <laughs> this is, is not that? just tea. So this Ice is, tea. I, I grew up in Philly, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, and a place called Wawa is a convenience store where I love the tea. Like, if that and, was something, if that was like an adult beverage, that would be you'd be getting tanks right now. So know, there is there <laughs> is rum mixed in with this. Oh <laughs> right, there's always <laughs> rum mixed into it. I got to put up with you guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, ten. It's ten a.m. for me, so I'm I'm on oh, okay. Tea. <laughs> yeah, it's it's seven p.m. for me. So uh, nice. I'm, uh, yeah. End of the day. End of the day. Work's done. <laughs> I'm good. But That's yeah, big. rum, 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 rum. Long Island iced tea. I actually like mixing um, a lemonade with the tea. And they usually call it like an Arnold Palmer. Um, so tea, lemonade, and rum, dark rum. I like like black spiced rum. Mm. So like uh, I don't know, Kraken. Kraken. Yeah, I love Kraken. Mm. Yeah, I'm a whiskey man. Well, I, I, that's why that's my that's my poison of choice. Hey, I I get along with anyone that agrees that alcohol is fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I moved I moved from England where we quite like our uh, alcohol. I moved to Australia where they can't get on without it. <laughs> I thought the English like to drink, and then I moved to Australia, and I'm like Jesus Christ. <laughs> Like you guys like to drink. <laughs> Why'd you move out there? Uh, oh, a very long story. So, oh, um, in in a nutshell, uh, my girlfriend at the time, now my wife, um, we we oh, this is this is a very long story. We we met in I I I, I was with a friend in Prague, and we, uh, you know, him and I just went out there and. We went to a hostel there, and then I met my now wife there. But she was 
she's American, but she was living in Australia herself. So she was stopping over in Europe for a little bit. She lives, used to live in Tasmania. And then she, on the way over to America, she stopped off in Europe. And then I met her there. And then, she, you know, we kind of had like a little, like, uh, I don't know, a, 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 what was supposed to probably just be like a fling. And then it, she went over to America. <laughs> and then we just kept talking. And we just kept talking. And we kept talking. And then she moved back to Australia. And I was at the time at an age where I could do the working holiday visa, which is a whole other thing. It just means that it's like an agreement that Britain has with Australia that we can both go over at, at a certain age and just work, you know, for a year. It can, it can okay. extend for two years. And uh, yeah, so that's what happened. Then I just stayed here. I just stayed here. Uh, I have seen these members. So, sorry, uh, Craig Adams, thank you very much for coming a member. I really appreciate it. Love that. Which album is that of Iron Maidens? That's, is that Fear of the Dark, that one? Hmm. Wait a minute, I'll click on it. Craig Adams. No, Killers. Of course, Killer, Killer, Killers, Killers, of course. <clears throat> um, love Iron Maiden. <laughs> uh, sorry, someone else. I'm sorry if I'm neglecting the chat. Um, <clears throat> uh, thank you very much uh, for the five gifted Bez. Um, bees, bees, memoir, um, memoir. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been like enjoying like uh, have, uh, reading your comments as well in my videos so, uh, and, and posts. So I appreciate that. Uh, Sweets Perez asks, "Can we still uh, can we still affectionately refer to you as part affectionate or not? That's the way it is here. I'm a pom." That's uh, Australians have made sure that I'm well aware that I'm a pom. <laughs> Bloody hell. They what don't shut mean? up. Especially when the crickets are. So this is interesting when it got the word pom. So pom, <clears throat> there's a lot of people that think pom means different things. Um, some And Australians themselves don't even bloody know. So pom <laughs> is what Australians call the Brits. And some of them think it's short for pomegranate because we burn like a pomegranate. Complete bullshit. The bloody Australians, you know, the white Australians burn just as badly as any of it. They, don't, they seem to think they don't get burnt. Yeah, you guys get burnt too. So what a lot of them say, it stands for prisoner of Mother England. Oh, uh, okay. But where's, where's there's no the e in it. Yeah, there's no <laughs> e. So that, honestly, I, that, they're the two that I've heard. Prisoner of Mother, Mother England. So that the idea, you know, like as everyone, I'm sure everyone knows, <clears throat> Uh, as far as like white Australian history sort of began is when the Brits, Captain Cook came over, they kind of like colonized the island and they, we, the Brits sent their convicts over there to kind of like mine for uh, spices and all the rest of it um, and resources. And so the, the thing is like, you know, we sent, they, they were pretty much the ones who were dumb enough to get caught. So they went over to Australia and their sort of things, they twisted the whole thing back and said, "Oh, we call us poms, but we, we, uh, we're, we're the one, we're the real prisoners because we have to stay in England." That, that's what I believe the thing is about pom. But wow. I don't, honestly, I've been wow. here ages, and no one can really give me a direct answer. I'm wondering <laughs> if people have already kind of done that. Um, fly art, thank you for uh, fly art, Le fly art. Thank you very much for coming a member. Welcome, appreciate it. Uh, Weeping Willow, thank you very much for your three months of membership. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> uh, wait a minute. Let's see. My chat jumps all the time, and I'm trying to make sure. Has anyone anyone in chat got their theory on where POM comes from? It's probably the sort of simple thing that I could just Google, and I've never done it. <laughs> it's been, it's been for like 11, 12 years, and I've never just Googled. The, where pom comes from. I swear to God, you ask Australians, they all say lots of different weird things. <laughs> um, so, uh, Kenny, like, I don't know, it's not like a very broad question, but like, <clears throat> and I'm sure a lot of people are sick to death of hearing it, but I'm just interested. Do you have like, I'm, I'm, I'm sure your idea is like, yeah, they're bullshitting it, but like, when it comes to coding Satori, I'm not sure if you've watched any of their videos or anything like that, but have you got like, a theory that might differ from some of the other things we sort of heard, or is there anything that you? I don't. You, you, you... I mean, the, my thoughts on that. I've seen all the videos. I, I've watched it because. Um, so I, I've been 
it, it sucks that I have to bring it up, but everybody else does. Uh, Jason Halls and I have been friends for over oh, 20 yes. years. Like we've known each other for that long. Um, we're good friends. I, I, we hang out once in a while. I recently stayed at his house for like a week. Um, and we just hung out all week. Um, so we're good friends and it, it sucks that so many people, um, uh, mostly on, I, I won't say mostly on the believer side because it's on the believer side. And then the people that are just outright, um, want to just hate and, and just point fingers and make fun and just like really be mean about things. Um, they always point out that uh, it's Jason's daughter. It's Jason's daughter. Um, but I can say, you know, that, that Jason actually contacted me first when, that original video came out of them doing this trick. Um, and I do say trick because I think it is a trick. Um, but he sent me a text and said, Hey, you know, like, I know what your job is. I know what you do. Don't worry about it. if anything, like, I don't want you to like feel weird. If you have to write something, um, our friendship is, is our friendship and not has anything to do with, with anything outside of it, which I thought was really cool. Um, but my thoughts on this is that, I, I do think that Cody is the one that's doing this um, because I, I've seen him. I've seen him exaggerate and outright fabricate details before um, because I, I did write an article on him. Uh, he was selling cat balls, cat ball toys um, a couple years back and selling them as vibration activated light spheres specifically designed for the paranormal. And he claimed all these upgrades um, inside of it, like upgraded battery, upgraded accelerometer, and stuff like that. And it turns out like that was all made up. Um, that wasn't true. I found his original purchase receipt from the company where he bought them. They are simply cat toys, like cheap. I think they were like 80 cents or something each to be, to be made. Um, they were cheap cat toys, um, same parts. I bought his, I bought ones from the same company that were labeled cat toys and compared them. I opened them up, compared everything inside and it was just the same shit. So right away, I really don't have any trust in him because I know that he tries to pull something over on people. Um, so when I saw the, uh, the trick going on and I was like, all right, well, I've heard about this kind of thing before. And I was in, I was at a, a ghost conference where they were and I talked to them. And I asked if they would do it for me and we went into a different room, but full disclaimer, this was a, a night of a party and I had been drinking. So yeah. I wasn't at Some full capacity. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like I was enjoying rum because it was a party that that's what everyone yeah. was doing. So when they did it, like my first reaction, I looked right at his feet. Like that's exactly yeah. what I did. And they kept going like they're pointing at different ways. And every time like I circled them, they would point in the other direction. Like it's coming from this way while I'm standing over here. And I was like, all right, well, this is really isn't going anywhere. I, and I, I can't be as detailed as I want to be. So I'm going to stop. We can stop doing this. Uh, and that was it. But then when I saw all these videos and I'm seeing people break it down, like Beardo and Mythos and, and a couple other people like breaking it down. I love the amount of detail that they paid to it. Um, I think it's really good because they got right down and dirty into the mud and figured out what was going on. Um, and just the fact that if, if you want to prove it, if you want to say, Hey, you know, like this is really us, then all you have to do is take your shoes and socks off and show it. I don't care That's about it. foot fetishes, bullshit like that. That doesn't matter to me because honestly, no one want, no one's asking her to do it. We're asking him. That's it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Asking him to do it. And, you know, every time he's asked, every time he's he's approached like that, you see his face. He gets nervous. He panics because he knows he can't do it. Um, no. Nah. And I, I've offered. They said they're gunning. They said they're gunning. The what? Have you heard this? So uh, at the end, so uh, Project Fear did a interview with uh, Cody Story, and at the very end of that interview, like, so they asked Cody Story if they would do it there and then, and they refused. Um, Surprise! And it was mostly it was mostly Satori doing all the talking with the with, with that. Well, she she refused. Like um, Cody didn't really say very much at that point. But uh, at the end of it, Dakota just addresses the camera on by him, solo and just says they have announced. Like Satori has announced that they will do the 
uh, their, their, I don't know what you want to call it. Their uh, test. Yeah, their controlled yeah, their, their, study. Yeah, their, uh, their gift. Um, yeah. in, in, you know, and in, I think they actually say an environment of their choosing, but it's going to be, um, they're going to do it without their shoes and socks. So my question is like, why can't they just do it anytime, any place? And so there's two things I got on that because one of the big things that Cody said at the very, very beginning of this went, went well, the very beginning, but when Sam and Colby kind of like uh, presented them to the world is that C Cody's thing was he outright said, "We don't do this for money." And I'm like, well, I guarantee if you're going to do this, no shoes. Like, well, first of all, we already know that that's not true. And secondly, if you are choosing when you can do this, not only are you going to make sure you're in a controlled environment, because of course you're going to, uh, but also like you're probably going to wait for the highest bidder. <laughs> that That's what yeah. I would imagine. Okay. Um, so I've. Uh, yeah, so quick question here for uh, CJ. CJ asks, uh, question for Mr. Biddle. Has there been any paranormal, has there been any paranormal, anything paranormal you haven't figured out yet uh, that had you scratching your head? So there, there's plenty of things that I can't figure out. And so I, I, I like to make that clear. Like I'm not like a, this super investigator where I solve every mystery. That's, it just doesn't happen. Um, um, there's a few things there's quite a few things where I've started looking into it and there's simply not enough information. And that is my kryptonite when it comes to this. Uh, literally, if there's not enough information, then you can't move forward. Uh, so sometimes my investigations have, some of them have taken a few hours, some take a few years. And that's because I hit a dead end. There's no more information. And I have to wait until I can either go back to the place or something else comes to light. So has there been stuff that, I, that I can't figure out? Yes. Does it make me scratch my head? Only when my head itches. Um, it, it, yeah. it really, it's not like something like, oh my goodness, I can't, I can't figure this out. Like what's going on? I mean, I do get obsessive about things. Um, and that's usually when I have this idea in my head, like, oh shit, you know, like I, I know it's something, I know I can figure it out and it will bug me. I will stay up all night, uh, and, and just go, my wife will find me in the morning, still working on something like how did they pull this off how did they make this thing move without like anything near it how did they do this um it becomes an uh, obsession but i usually do figure it out when i'm when i'm that obsessed about it but uh yeah i mean the, sh the short answer because i usually talk a lot the short answer to your question is yes there are some things that i can't figure out plenty of things i can't figure out and again yeah the reason is that a lack of information um, and also, like I like to add on to that, like, not being able, I think there's apps, there should be no shame in saying, I don't know. And also, right. if there's nothing wrong with saying, I don't know, does not mean, or necessarily mean, it's paranormal. That, right. that, I, that doesn't add up to me at all. I don't buy that at all. Like, it's like, oh, if you, if you, if you don't know, it must be paranormal. Um, the only, the only way, the only way that you know, the cause of something is if you find the source, if you don't find the source, then you don't know you can speculate. And I mean, I, I try to, to, to make that clear when I am speculating, I tell you, this is speculation on my part, but yes, here it is. Um, I can't say like a hundred percent, this is what it's, what's causing it. Because if the data doesn't line up, then it simply doesn't line up. And mm -hmm. the answer of, I don't know, is, is like you said, it's perfectly acceptable to say, I don't know when in fact you do not know. Um, yeah. I cannot stand when people like do that. They're like, oh, I don't know how that happened. And then they immediately go to, it must be a ghost. That's bullshit. Um, because now, whether you realize it or not, you're making up a conclusion. You are fabricating a conclusion um, because you're blaming it on paranormal you're saying something is a ghost when in fact you don't know if it's a ghost so yeah that's my is rant it, it's, it's, just before i ask this question uh thank you very much hey hdv for your membership i am going to get down this chat if anyone else has said something i, I uh, say i will get there but just quickly kenny um and this might be an odd question but do you want ghosts to be real i or would the panel, or many things in the panel like, do you want that to be real I would love it. 
I would absolutely love it. Um, the thought, because I mean, I'm I'm getting up there, so like the thought of death and yeah. dying eventually starts creeping in to like your late night thoughts, like especially when you see it on TV and you're like, yeah, one day I'm going to be there, you know. And I would love to be able to see some of my family and friends. I mean, I've I've lost too many friends to to silly things in this world, and I would love to be able to talk to them again. Uh, and I think that's why I'm so passionate about making sure it's right. Um, because I do want there to be an afterlife. I do want, I would love to see a Bigfoot. I would love to see an alien because the first thing I would do when they would come down to abduct me is say, can I drive? Like, I'll go with you willingly. Just abduct me, take me to your planet, but let me drive the flying saucer because that would be <laughs> just so cool. So, so cool. Fun. Um, so yeah, all of these things, when, when I start looking into them, I would love it to be true. It, it, it I think it's a, a false, uh, uh, idea to think that because someone like me is so skeptical that I just, I just want to, you know, naysay everything like poo poo on everything and it's not but real. I'm not so that's the thing is I, I'm the same as you. I, I think most people in the world want it to be true, but that's obviously the, the 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 biggest thing you're fighting against is that temptation of just saying because I want it to be true, I'm gonna I, I'm going to neglect rational thought, right? Because I want it to be true, and I think that's something that's gonna be quite dangerous, and that's why like it's, you very much see that with the the paranormal channels that I watch. Right, uh, and that, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's even the it's ones difficult. who aren't necessarily fake. They just they want it to be true so much that they just dive headfirst into it. Right, and and that that diehard belief, I, I understand it. I mean, I I used to be a ghost hunter. I was raised believing that the afterlife was real, and and that you you would see your loved ones, that the angels were real, that demons were real, even though we didn't talk about them. <clears throat> um, you know, like. All this stuff was real, and because that became a, that was that was um, reinforced in me growing up, so it was conditioned into my my mindset, my worldview uh, from a young age. So seeing the other side, see and the other side, I mean, like seeing skepticism and science look at things differently, um, that was a struggle because it's like this goes against what I believe, and what I believe has been like that's that's been part of my personality since I, I was little, you know, like we went to church, we did community things with the church and the priest would come and visit your house and bless your house. And that was part of life to me. And once you start looking at the different aspects of it and, and really start thinking critically, you start figuring out like, oh shit, you know, I don't think a lot of this is real. And the cognitive dissonance that goes on in your head, the struggle with reality and and what you believe and what you want to be real is a really tough struggle. And I know a lot of people have have a tough time with that. Um, and it, it's like a springboard. You can either start advancing slowly and start, you know, rational thought and, and understanding the world a little bit better. Or you slingshot back into your uh, uh, predisposed uh, beliefs and you hold on to them and it becomes more of um, the, the, like a rebound where you're like, I'm going to hold on to these beliefs even stronger now because I want them to be. Uh, and, and I want to also say like wh when it comes to personal beliefs, personal beliefs are one thing. And when you keep them personal, that that's one thing. Like if you want to do pray to whatever God or goddess that you want to pray to and, and, and do whatever to, that's fine. As long as it doesn't un affect other people. You know, when you start going out and telling people they have to follow your religion or they have to do what you're saying, then that's when someone like me gets upset. And it's like, well, hold on a second. If you have a say, then I have a say. If you put it out there in public, it's open for criticism. So, I, I often see I often see like when you when you claim to have absolute truth and you really want to. That absolute truth becomes like um, something that you're trying to enforce on other people. That's the problem. That's that's. Yeah. Uh, live and let live, absolutely. Guys, I am going to I hear show my surprise. I'm going to show the surprise. That, that sounds really weird and dodgy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not that kind of live stream. What was that zipper sound? <laughs> uh, 
Okay, guys, welcome. Uh, I'll say what it is before I... I'm going to put the camera on. Oh and we got a brand new Side Eye Guy mask. So you're going to... This is a debut for the Side Eye Guy mask. So just a heads up, I've got two masks. Uh, they were both done by Elaine Baker, Creepy Caboodle. If one of my mods could find Elaine Baker's channel... Because she's probably asleep right now because it, uh, uh, it's in the UK. I, I got these masks like, what, an hour ago. I got them in the mail an hour ago. Um, so uh, she'll probably end up watching this, you know, uh, retrospectively. But I'm going to go on the camera here. So this is Elaine Baker's mask. Drum roll. <laughs> New side eye guy mask. <laughs> So there are two masks. I, I I do like this one, don't get me wrong, but I think the other one might be a bit better. So I'll just put this on. I'll keep this on up for a minute, and then I'll take the camera off and I'll put the other one, and everyone in chat can tell me if they prefer the first one or the second one. But so, like, she's... Wait a minute. Someone sent to a super thanks. Wait a second. Dude, uh, that looks cool right there. Like, you're, like, off to the side, and the eyes are lining up. The other... That, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm gonna walk around the whole time like this. Where do I go anywhere? <laughs> oh man! <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> um, thank you very much, uh, Johnny P. I really appreciate the ten Australian. Thank you very, very much. Uh, can cool. I hope I haven't missed anyone. I haven't missed anything, have I? Like any super thanks or on members or gifted members? I don't think I have. Can one of my mods just let me know if that is the case? I, I, I'm pretty sure I'm on top of it. So everyone seems to like it. Okay, good. I'm glad because this is what you're going to see when I end up going to the bloody Conjuring house. Um, okay, <laughs> oh. good. Okay, I'm I'm really glad. I I was I was really excited. So like, yeah. Any so so you know any of my members? Um, I did like an unboxing video just before this live, so you can watch the unboxing videos like a members thing. Uh, also, one of my, because I don't go on camera that often, I've got on my Truth or Demons tea. Ooh, that's cool. So that's, um, yeah, very cool. So that's Stevie from the Truth or Demons podcast. Um, that She's the lady that, lovely lady and very knowledgeable lady, like really knows her stuff about the Warrens. Uh, she, Ooh. that was the interview video I did with her. Um, where she kind of did a deep dive in the devil made me do it case. And I honestly got, it was like really, really fascinating. Um, and I will be doing another video with her, uh, where we're going to talk about the animal doll because good God, that is just out and out mythology. That, wow. That, wow. Uh, that, 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 that doll is, it's amazing. The, how people what? believe like, well they're not even not necessarily have belief like how much people don't know the truth about some of the claims and stories of that doll yeah yeah it, it's it's a shame it's it's so many people base if it's made if there's a movie made of it that's where they get their history you know like they, oh, yeah. they that's it like they see the movie and they think oh that's that's what happened that's really what happened and i mean quite a few times I, i've pointed out to to people like i have the book I have, because I've also been working on a video about um, the Snedeker case. Um, so I have okay. their first book. Um, and in this, it talks about, this is where the Annabelle, Annabelle story came from, um, or in print at least. And I mean, in Ed's own words, he tells you it's not possessed. It, right. Out, if anybody just read this freaking book, they'd, they'd be like, well, why is it in a case? Why is it all like special? Why why is this? Well, it's this, not... is, this is the thing I just before I go, because I saw uh, always a point I always bring up with the Warren. First off, um, Vlad, thank you very much for your five uh months of membership. I really appreciate it. Let's go. And um God, Bell's uh memoir. Th thank you so much for the 10 gifted. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh can I just ask one quick question before I mention anything about the Warrens? Can you guys hear me well in the mask? Is this yeah. is this and this is this is mesh here as well. She did a brilliant job. So like this is this is a quite a large mouthpiece here for a mask, but because it's mesh and she put like the little mouth over it, like I feel like this is the the sound that would come for this mask would be better than usual if it was to be like you know 
because I was looking at other people doing masks and they were just going to put like a little slit here. And I was like, that's not quite enough. I don't know. So it's better than the shoebox. <laughs> it's better than the <laughs> shoebox. I mean, you can, you can hear a difference. Like when you put it on before yeah, you, yeah, yeah. your camera came on, I could hear the difference. I'm like, oh, he's, he's putting the mask on. All right, here we go. Um, but it's definitely better. It, it's got to be more comfortable. It's so much more comfortable. Like I can actually feel like I could wear this for a whole investigation, whereas the shoebox wouldn't have lasted longer than half an hour. Uh, <laughs> the thing about the um, the thing that doesn't like, so like you've seen the Warrens. I'm just going to call it a shack. They call it a museum, but I'm going to call it a shack. You know that 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 haunted shack with all these items, and there's like bookshelves and item, 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 item. So there's two things about that that just just by pure common sense that don't i don't think get asked enough one is like whenever you hear about a haunting at least in my um i was going to itch my head there and i'm like that's not my head <laughs> um <laughs> uh so whenever you get like it's never it's, it's not very often is it an item that's haunted it's usually the location or a ghost an apparition or bangs and all that but it's not so I, I'm not sure if they're trying to claim that, like Ghostbusters, they put it in an item. They put the, every <laughs> ghost, they've attached it to it. And that in itself just doesn't make any sense to me. But I guess none of this makes sense. But the other question I've got is, like, especially Ed and Tony, who's the son-in-law of the one, they keep Fair this again. thing up by saying over and over and over again, this is evidence we are documenting the paranormal. We're, and there's all these kind of words that kind of legitimize what they're doing. But where is any of the people who originally own those items? <laughs> including, including Annabelle. Yeah. We have never, ever heard of the two nurses that had that doll before Ed and Lorraine Warren got it. Ever. And They've never you, come forward. You won't. They won't because I truly don't think they exist. They I don't. think it was a completely like, fabricated like this, story. It's <laughs> literally... Hundreds, if not like near a thousand mm. items in that shack of theirs. Not as far as I could research, I can't find. And Stevie says the same thing. Like she's been way deeper in this than I have. Again, Truth or Demons podcast, Stevie, great podcast, great. Uh, she started a YouTube channel. Go subscribe to her YouTube channel. Um, she, um, she can't find any of these claims as well. Like right. you know, we're talking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of items. Not one person to confirm. Oh yeah, that was that was mine, and it was. This is the backstory of it. We right. just got Ed Lorraine, and now Tony, who's as just as big a bloody con artist as those two were. Hey, that's that's a good example of just living off of someone's else someone else's reputation. Um, yeah. That's oh yeah, that and is. he's he's been very he's well respected as well within those circles, Tony. Right. But, uh, so, I, so, so I want to I want to. So, uh, Blaster Rice, thank you very much for your five gifted. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I want to read something to you. Um, it's real quick. So this is from, so I, like I, I mentioned, I'm doing a, a video. I'm working on it. it. It's it's probably not what you think, but I'm giving the history and diving into the Snedeker case, which is the haunting in Connecticut case. Right, um, yes. And there was a, a court document by Gerald Brittle brittle who wrote this book demonologist um and uh another book for the warrens and in 2017 yeah 2017 he filed a lawsuit against warner brothers um because the, the conjuring movie was coming out and he apparently had all the rights to all the warrens um stories with th that he had a contract with lorraine warren and ed warren um which lorraine conveniently forgot when she signed her deal with warner <laughs> um yeah. But in it, like, there's like 500 pages to this, and I went through it all. And they talk, they talk to the, um, they talk to the author uh, Ray Garten, who wrote In a Dark Place, and this is about the the Sen Snedeker case. And he was having problems because he went to the family to try to get information to write this book, and they couldn't keep their story straight. Uh, and he's quoted. Um, and this is from him on this court case. And I also have it in a, a, a different email, like directly to my company, because we ver we tried to verify it was, and we did verify it was him. 
But he says that when he found out that the Senators couldn't keep their individual story straight, I went to Ed Warren and explained the problem. They're crazy, he said. All the people who come to us are crazy. That's why they come to us. Just use what you can and make the rest up. You write scary stories, right? Well, make it up and make it scary. That's why we hire you. Um, so that, I think I've I mean, heard that before, actually. But, but yeah, that, yeah. This, I keep coming back to this. If there's just one shit in the swimming pool, don't jump in it. <laughs> that's, it comes, like, go, that's it. That, that alone, I mean, there's lots and lots of, like, you know, like, more, even, if, so even if you want to say, oh, that's one person's word against uh, Ed's and all the rest of it. But th it gets to a point where it's like, there's so many that you can't just ignore it. Right. Right. And these, I mean, these are guys that wrote these books. These are best-selling horror writers that have um, a reputation already. And when they come out and say, look, you know, I tried and he told me to make it up. Like that's, yeah. that, that that's tells it. you everything. That tells that's you everything. You need to know. There's yeah. no more, you know, yep. That's it. Guys, and I'm, I'm going to put on the second mask and you, I, so <clears throat> when I put on the second mask, I would like everyone in the chat to give me, you know, tell me what your your preferred mask is. So this mask here, number one, and the second mask that I'll come back on with is going to be number two. So just put a one in for this being your favorite mask and a two in for the other one being your favorite mask. Also, if anyone's going to listen to this, um, you know, after the actual live finishes, you know, like when the live goes up and all the rest of it, uh, just put that in the comments because I just like to know. I'm interested. I've got my thoughts on it, but I won't say it until I kind of hear what you guys think. Kenny, also, please give me your opinions. Oh, I'll, I definitely will. I love giving my opinion. <laughs> I give it every day. Oh, is it like significantly better the the sounds when the mask goes off? Oh, it's definitely there's definitely a difference. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, more, uh, yeah. Louder, but I mean, it's not uh, bad when you have a mask on. Um, well, maybe I mean, maybe it sounds better on this one. Maybe the this side they've got. Wait a minute, let's put it on. <laughs> that. See, I, I I think I like the first one better. Interesting. Yeah, that is that looks a little bit. There's a there's an uncanny valley thing going here. Uh, a little too. And I'm looking at it like, hmm, this person wants to kill me. Like <laughs> this no, person. No, it's funny you should say that because I thought that about the first one. I thought the first one might have been a little bit creepy. <laughs> but okay, one is a lot of ones. That's interesting because you know what's interesting? I thought this one was the better of the two. But maybe it's because yeah. I like, <laughs> maybe because I'm a serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> that's what people are saying. It's a serial killer mask. See, like that's that's what I felt like. You put that on, and that is like the kind of creepy shit you would see in like that's Halloween. Nice. That's Michael Myers' like little brother. <laughs> it's like Michael Myers. Nothing against the 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 woman that made it. Um, no, honestly, you know, like, Elaine Baker. Like what I didn't realize. I'm not sure if you can really see it. Like she put real that's, detail in the yeah. hair. Like that's really cool. That's really cool. That's really cool. I'm not sure if it might look better if I put like a baseball cap on backwards so you, you don't see my hair quite as much. <laughs> like, let, me, let, me, let me try that quickly. I'll try that. Yeah. Give me just give me a sec. Yeah, I'll give Wait. you a sec. I hope everyone's loving the show. I hope you're enjoying the conversation. Um, it's fun. I've been I've been a fan for uh, for a while now, and uh, I got hooked. Actually, I think I got hooked by Beardo. I think Beardo was the first one. No, actually, Crow Crow of Judas actually uh, reached out to I me. A video with Crow. Yeah, yeah, he reached out to me, and w we were talking, and he wanted to he wanted to ask and if he could interview me for a. The uh, the video he was doing about the DR60 and it, like put in a little segment and we got the talking and I said, you know, I'll just come on if you want. If it's up to you, if you want to just do a full like full on conversation. And we did. We had a great time. He was really fun to talk to. And then he was talking about Beardo and Parple doing a something with the house in between and something about a baseball. And I was like, oh, I remember that. Let me go look at that. And that made me look at that again. And then that pissed me off because that that film sucked. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's just horrible. Um, 
and the, just the oh, bullshit. I remember, you saw, I remember you ranting about that, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, I, I found you, and uh, I was like, oh, this, this is fun. You're funny. I like I like the shit. You're, you're one of the few. You and Beardo really make me, like, I'll sit there and watch the videos, and I'm, I'm really into the information. I love when you guys dig into it and like really get find out the the good information and then all of a sudden like you come out with a one-liner man and i'm cracking up on the floor because i'm like this funny motherfucker <laughs> oh, this you. is great you're welcome yeah man. that's the thing is like, i think with beard though it's like he um oh i feel like this actually got a little bit worse with the wait a second well it does it does hold down your hair so you don't see that popping out the back yeah i think that might look a bit better actually but yeah it kind of messes because she she took the dimensions on my face, of course, and I feel like when I put the hat, I was pushing it out, right? Yeah, it, I, I don't know. Is it just me, or does the does it sound a little different now? Is I, am I just being my end? Uh, I don't. Same? Maybe a little bit. I don't know if you're uh, just. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't Smoothie know. World, thank you very much for the ten dollars. I appreciate it. Right, we have. Joe fucking oh, shit. Here. there goes the show. Well, what are you talking about? I'm here to save the show. Whatever, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, that's man. enough of Joe. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> oh man, that's great. Weird that I can actually like you know do these uh lives now and like actually just go on camera. Been saying that I'm gonna have to take this. Wait a second. I'm gonna try the hat thing. I think the hat thing will work. I just need to get like a lighter weight hat. I think that would actually make it look better so you don't see my hair. Hmm. <laughs> Let me try the first one. So by and large, I think most people are saying again, sorry, screw if I, I missed that. Thank you very much for your ten dollars. Super thanks. I really appreciate it. Um oh, I think this might work better with this first mask. That feels far more comfortable there than the second go. mask. Yeah. So so I think most people were saying it's the first, it's this mask people prefer, right? Yeah, I do. I do. Yeah. I mean, if you're, if you feel like going out one night and, you know, going on a rage and yeah. killing people, then definitely <laughs> mask number two. Um, <laughs> but this one, if you want to just say like, Hey, I'm kind of shy. But I'm, yeah. You know, I don't feel like killing people. I just want to, you know, maim. <laughs> then yeah. that's number one. <laughs> oh, no, guys. It's gone from bad to worse. Oh, so, shit. I really feel like the third wheel coming on like this, but oh, well, you know, hello. <laughs> like the fifth wheel. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kenny, I'm going to make you laugh one day. I I'm destined to make you laugh one day. You can't make it's me laugh. Submission now. I'm dead inside. Go, I don't go, have to go, go, go on camera. Go on camera, Craig. Yeah, go, go on camera. Stop hiding behind your icon. He actually has seen me without my mask. I did show myself to him as a uh, when I did interview him. I showed myself just to give him some like I felt like I, I had to prove myself to him because he because I'm like I was weird. So I was like he probably thinks I'm some fucking troll or something. So I got a I got a question then for you both of you Crow and, and... Say very quickly Ariel thank you very much for your five dollars uh, Kenny looks like a young John Goodman Oh my God yes Oh my God I love John you, Goodman too I can't unsee it hmm. Do I um, Yeah Yeah you I can see it. Really, Yeah What's up? Did you oh, ever damn, think I can't to judging masks on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, uh, this, is, this is where it takes me. But my, my question is, uh, and I, I think I know the answer, um, but why, why the masks? People want to kill us. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I feel. I like... <laughs> Yeah, for me, for me, I just I I value my privacy. I just like yeah. the uh, me too. of it. Um, I, I, I okay. So I mean, when I say this, I mean it's with the greatest respect to Beardo because you know I love Beardo. But he said this a few times. I've heard it a few times, and like he's like it, it. It just comes down to the kind of person you are. So 
Beardo has said this story that he, uh, he his channel's gone bigger and he's all this success and good on him. And he's at 31,000 subscribers. And he said, like, you know, he's been to, like, fill uh, what, what in England we call petrol, what you guys call gas. He went to go fill his car up. And okay. um, someone saw, hey, you're Beardo. That's Beardo. Hey, Beardo. And Beardo loved it. If that happened to me, I'd, I'd want to. Ugh, no, I, 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 that'd be horrible to me. I, I, that's like, that's like, that would be so triggering to me. That'd be like fearful. Like if anyone just goes, hey, that, that guy, you know, if I just, right. if I'm walking around with this, I've got it coming. But if I'm like, don't have this mask on, and someone recognised me as side eye guy, I mean, like, oh god, I don't know. I, I don't. That's, I, I like doing the videos, and I like making people laugh, and I, I love how it's all going. But I very much rather keep my personal life away from this i don't want them to be and i'm not like arrogant enough to kind of go like oh fucking everyone out there is going to be like <laughs> swarming the streets. it's not really about that it's like it's probably more when you're completely blindsided by it you're just going to get like a pint of milk or something like that and then someone might recognize you i don't know that for me that's that's just not for me but that, that's just me personally i've had that happen to me a couple of times and it's it is weird like i don't know how to react to that it's it's very weird. The the first time I had someone that I didn't know like that like recognize me and say something was I was in Kentucky. I went to a conference and I'm walking down the aisle and someone turned, they looked at me and then they literally jumped jumped high in the air into yeah. the middle of the aisle and pointed at me and go, "You're the motherfucking Orbs guy." And I, I was like, what do I do? Wow. Do I turn and run? <laughs> do I tackle him? What do I do here? <laughs> I don't know because I didn't know if that was good or bad. Um, yeah. And I did find out it was good. He, he actually turned out to be a good uh, good friend um, over the years. Uh, but it was weird. And and I, I get I That's really the only time. Like, usually I go to conferences, but I'm in that environment. I don't think I've ever been in, like on the street and someone said, hey, I've seen your videos. Um, cause I think I would freak out a little bit too, cause you don't know, you don't know. Like I've, I, I asked, I asked that question because I, I kind of figured it was for privacy. Um, because like I've had death threats. I've had people literally tell me that if I showed up at a conference, I wasn't going to leave. They were going to make sure of it, that they've threatened my family, um, and stuff over just over freaking ghost stories, you know, yeah. like it's something yeah. so silly and, and yeah. ridiculous, but and that's why like, I don't I don't take my wife to a lot of things. Um, I, I ask her to stay home because it's I just don't want her. Like, you never know. Like I, I know right. the vast, vast, vast majority are all just piss and air. But that's with the greatest respect for the 258 people that are listening to this chat and anyone else, who, any of my subscribers on our side, some of you are fucking weird. <laughs> paranormal enthusiasts can be a little bit nutty um i yeah. think we can all uh, can admit that so like i just don't i don't know and it's like you know I, this thing about me like you know in australia i live pretty far away like you know there's not going to be as big a pool of people over here as there are in america but like you know i yeah, like crow said and like you know i've, I've had people threaten to unalive me i've had threats of violence some can get a bit graphic. Others are a bit cute. Like someone one time said to me, I'm going to turn you into a ghost. That's that's cute. Right. But like, you know, others are like, you know, I'm going to find you like you better not step foot in America kind of thing. So like, yeah. Yeah. you know, as, it, as if America is like a tiny little island. Um, just yeah. before I go, on, can I just say thank you very much, Kaz, a uh, great master. Seg. Thank you very much uh, for be being a member for five months. I appreciate that. There was another one here. Uh, as he powers. Uh, thank you very much for uh, being a member for four months. Uh, wearing a mask as mystery. That's another thing as well. Yeah, there is a bit of like, there's a bit of mystery. Sexual with appeal. Yeah, sexual. Thank you. I, I also... Nothing, nothing says sexual like this mask. This is what's No, you're, you're right. You're, hey, I agree. Hey, you I never know. This. You never know. There's weird people out there. They they might you be turned know, on right well, now. Well, maybe the, yeah. it, well, the weird bit is like you know the serial killer mask, the other mask. Right. And then, uh, <laughs> I just want uh, I want to clear up real quick again for, for the five dollars. Um, the, and now um, that you have a mask, to uh, the rest of the debunking crew need masks, uh, and then we can 
finally get that full Monty. <laughs> Stop going about the full Monty. The full Monty ain't uh, happening. Arrow, <laughs> you got me. Arrow's been wanting a full Monty from uh, us, uh, Defunct, for quite some time now. That's been going on for months. I um, Somebody asked about like what does the, the uh, orbs guy mean? And that was, I did a video like years and years ago when I first started my channel, my YouTube channel. And it was, it was titled motherfucking orbs because they were, huh. I was so annoyed with everyone sending me pictures and telling me that they're real. And I went through everything. And I think I dropped like a thousand F bombs during that video. And, uh, it, I'm, I'm almost embarrassed by it now because it was just over the top. Um, and, uh, so that's that's where the guy recognized me from. He saw that video and saw me walking and was like, oh, shit, that's you. And um, it was weird. For a little while there, I got called the asshole of the paranormal. And what I was like, people, well, you still are. You still are. You still are. You still are. Um, that's that's, that's, that's the, the people who like you. Thing. But it was the whole orb thing. And I would like, I would explain, here's what's going on. And then they want the opinion, right? I tell them, here's here's what's going on here. And then they act like I kicked their dog and like did horrible things to their family. I'm like, what the hell? Like, and I'm reading my comment. I'm like, I came at this with like the most respect. So it started to become a joke with, with people. And I went to an event out in Biloxi, Mississippi, and I got introduced as the asshole of the paranormal. <laughs> <laughs> Can I add to the mask real quick before we change the subject? Also, it kind of goes back to like you know, remember when you watch TV? And there's these guys that used to come on like on shows, and they would tell how the magicians fake their tricks. They would always have a mask on. I thought that was always cool, you know. Plus, when I started, I, I followed Shape, and he wore a mask, and I thought that was pretty cool. And but also the, the those magician people that would always out the uh, magicians on how they did the tricks. They always wore masks. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, freaking me out. Like, I paranormal. Um, asks a good question. And uh, Boot Production Paranormal's like started debunking. I've actually kind of watched yes. a video, like, it's been really good, actually. You did a really good one, Cody Satori, that I really enjoyed. Um, so he asked, Question How do I, how do you guys handle nasty comments in your videos? Uh, do you address them or ignore them? I need some help here as a new guy. So, before we get started on that, uh, if someone can, um, one of my mods, please put a link to uh, Boo Production Paranormal in in the chat here. Go check him out. Go 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 check him out for yourself, guys. I I've, I've really quite enjoyed your, your, your videos, and you're very good at breaking down uh, the debunks here, and you're you're entertaining to watch. So yeah, please like go check him out for yourself. And if you like what you see, give him a sub. Um, I don't know who who wants to take that one. Uh, I play for me. It depends. Sometimes I'll give like a a smart ass funny response back sometimes i'll ignore it or sometimes i'm just a dick i like being a dick but <laughs> depends, on my, depends, on my mood. <laughs> depends on my mood in the comments i guess i like arguing i'll sit there argue all night back and forth like for they're going for days like replying these yeah. these because sometimes it's a debate but some of them are really pretty i've had some really scary ones too where i've tried to kind of defuse it like hey man this is just my opinion kind of calm down kind of thing <laughs> yeah i for me to be honest, I, I just don't look at the comments. Um, I, I when I put a video up, most of the videos that I put up on my my own channel, so the, the YouTube channel under my name, are just my lives. So when I do my Friday night show, that's what goes up on there. And the rest of them that I do, when it's full investigations, they go up on the Center for Inquiry uh, YouTube channel. So they have the comments on, but I just don't bother um, because you're going to have a wide range of people. Some some are good. They they like it. They give you compliments. Others are just assholes. And they just, they, you know, they're the stereotypical people that live in their mother's basement and they're like 50 years old still. They have crumbs all down the front of them because they just do nothing but eat and, you know, play on hey. their keyboard and piss people off. Sorry. No. I know. I know. <laughs> Tell your mom I said hi. <laughs> Never mind. I'm sure she's in the background. She can hear. Um, <laughs> so I don't, I don't oh, really man. Bother. I mean, sometimes even like, cause I also do other platforms. I do I like TikTok. Um, I do a lot of TikTok videos now and I see some of the comments and I let them go. Like sometimes I'll log on and there's like 200 comments 
I'm not looking through them. I, I really don't have the time because I have I have a job and I have a life and I have a family. So um, I'm not going to sit there all day and argue with somebody. If you want to have a conversation, that's different. Um, I'm always willing to have a conversation, but I'm not going to go back and forth with someone that you know has nothing to stand on, no argument. Um, they just want to bitch at me. So when it comes to nasty comments, I I usually do just ignore them if I see them. Or if they're really good, you know, like, like I've been going back and forth with one guy making videos, debunking his videos. And if he says something, I usually comment and it's just something fun. You know, I have fun with it. I don't take it seriously. I make a joke. Um, I don't make fun of them. I just make a joke. And, you know, it's not aggressive. And it, I mean, I don't look like I'm being a dick. And that just pisses him off even more, which is fun for me, you know, because. I get under their skin. I live rent free right there. Yep. Right. Uh, for me, I just before I go answer that. Uh, screw any world. Thank you very much for uh, the five gift dude. I really appreciate it. Um, for me, much like what Kenny says, I, I, but so I'm coming up to a, doing this for a year now, and um, weirdly, I mean, I probably do still get quite a lot of hate comments, but like I, I got a lot more when I first started with like very few, like I got, I went through a phase when I first started this where the algorithm, the YouTube algorithm didn't know where to put me. So I got all people that love Twin Paranormal watching my Twin Paranormal video and would just go, you're a piece of shit. And then just go off on me and all the rest of it. And I kind of got a lot of hate comments there. And I used to respond back to them with, you know, and uh, like you know, attack them, going, "Oh, how can you think this when they're doing this and all that?" And now, in time, I'm just like, you know what? Who cares? Like, if, uh, but like, if I can't find an opportunity to have a joke with it, I just ignore it. So I, I either respond with humor in some level of humor, anyway, or I just don't respond at all. Because I've done this before, where I have responded, or I've actually tried to like have a debate with them, and then it just goes south. <laughs> like when I say, I, I maybe like well, they have a, a go at me, and I say, "Well, have you thought about this?" And then it's like, and then not only do I realize it's not going to go anywhere, but then they they got one response from me, so they won't stop. Yeah. So like my one response will end up in four or five, like within like a two hour period from them, and they just they wanting me to respond back to them. I'm like, you know what, uh, it's it's not worth it. That's that's the trap. I've I've learned. To avoid that, it's like they try to bait you, and if you take the bait, yeah, yeah they want they want to go back all day, and the, so then it's just easy to just not give them the attention. Yeah, and this is, especially especially with me, like you know, with the kind of I get that like certain videos, I'm I'm, I'm I do kind of like shit on what they like because it's nonsense. Like the the Yasko video I just made. Any Yas if anyone who watches Yasko and thinks he's great and thinks he's legitimate and all the rest of it, and they watch my video, they are not gonna like what I have to say. And that's fine. <laughs> if you want to come in and say you don't like it, I I've got to a point now where I, I don't care anymore. Like, you know, you can say what you want about that, and I can say what I want about it, and that's that. Like I just don't get bugged out right. about it like I used to. Right. Yeah. And it, when it comes to that kind of stuff, like it, it really depends on what it is. You know, like if if it's something that I, I'm bored, like once in a while when I'm home for like a week by myself and I'm, I have nothing to do, which is really rare. And somebody's like, well, why can't you do this? You know, prove this to me. And I'll look at it and be like, OK, <laughs> all right, let's do it. You know, and it's recreating some kind of poltergeist video or something like that. And, and that's fun to me. I love doing that. But when it comes to nasty comments, just don't worry about it. You know, don't what what's going to happen if you don't answer? You know, nothing, yeah. nothing. Um, wow. They don't subscribe. Ooh, you know, big deal. Just keep doing what you're doing. And th those think, kind of I people Josh, will leave. Josh from Paranormal Seekers actually makes a good point. He says, like, he just he's really nice. He like kill, kill him with kindness. That's a, that's a good tactic too. kill him. With kindness subscribe to Josh, by the way. Sorry, I would say subscribe to Josh, you guys. Josh is uh, new, and yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's subscribe awesome. to anybody like so. Paranormal Seekers, um, actually, Josh, would you like let me know? Would you like to join? Um, Josh Ooh. is uh, you know, starting off as a um, 
paranormal investigator and he's now turned to debunking. He's done, what have you got, like five or six, maybe more actually, debunking videos under your belt. Um, and they're good. Like, you know, he really goes deep with um, with some of his debunks here. Like, I actually really do quite enjoy his videos. So, yeah, like, if someone can... What? What's happening? Uh, no, Crow's he making like... He's making lewd comments. <laughs> like, ooh, he goes deep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's Crow. Oh, God. Yeah. Crow, you know, uh, Josh, if you'd like to swap in with Crow, that'd be great. Sub in. <laughs> <laughs> like swapping. Um, with my question. Google says the world death rate is 61 million. Uh, would that not make you think that hauntings will occur everywhere if not just in scary houses? I mean, this is the thing, like, I don't know what the rules are. They've changes all the time because sometimes what? some people say ghosts are only people with unfinished business. I mean, Jesus Christ, everyone has unfinished business, don't they? What? Where? Since when? Like, when? Yeah, I don't know. That's just, it's just one of those things. It's like, oh, it's like unfinished business, unfinished business. Like 61 like, million? That can't be, like, the history of... of the 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 running number of all history. Oh right, you mean that 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 number? Yeah, um, that's way too low. Well, yeah, I would have thought it'd be more than that. We're in the billions right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, we. I don't we, mean sixty-one billion. More. Actually, sixty-one billion it can't be sixty-one billion. That's too high, surely. I don't know. Plus, all the un unaccounted for people. <clears throat> yeah, it's a lot. Uh, let's see. Dun dun dun. Could it, be, yeah. Could it be that high? It can't be that high. What is? Wait, let me now. I gotta look it up. What is? I don't even know what this is. World death. I don't, is that like a year, two years? Wait. How does ever? I think that's what they're saying. Ever since humanity. So world world o meter says real time world statistics every year an estimated two hundred ninety thousand to. 600 or eight no hey, where's my glasses i'm getting old Six hundred and fifty thousand people die each year that's the estimate so yeah that's Sorry, a lot what was that again? Say, that, say that number again so every year it's estimated that between two hundred and ninety thousand to six hundred and fifty thousand people die in the world that's every year oh. that's a lot <clears throat> That's 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 a hell of a lot. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know where the uh, where where the. I mean, I'm not just being mean about it, but like, where's the where's this number coming from? That would be interesting to know. Now I'm curious. Uh, all right. Yeah, I'm I don't, I don't know lost what's... in the comments, guys. So I really go. Uh, I'm hoping uh, I can find. And a, a small percentage of those people. Sorry, I'll, I'll I'll try. I'll keep my eyes open for it. All right. <clears throat> a um, small percentage of those people have choked on hot dogs as well. I'm sure mayonnaise was a good <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I, I actually looked it up the other day. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, I looked up which foods are most commonly choked on in this country. It was like, I think it was, because I thought it would be apples, but it was like, I think it was carrots and apples and then, um, what was it, corn dogs? No, I'm just kidding. It wasn't corn dogs. I forgot what it was. But sometimes you go too deep in those corn dogs, buy up too much, you know? That's just you. Uh, <laughs> it's just so tempting, you know. <laughs> it's on a oh, stick. Uh, How could you not? Uh, Gary, just so you know, I have kind of made a video on Sasquatches when uh, the low files uh, went Bigfoot hunting. And there's also another one I did. I actually forgot when I made that video like a while back. I did when Exploring with Josh goes. Uh, <laughs> Oh, that was hilarious. Yeah, I don't know what you want to call it. Puckwudgie hunting. Puckwudgie. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mothman I, might have been there. I think they yeah. said there's like a Pugwudgie, whatever the fuck it is. Uh, out there in like the, the, the forest where the uh, Hinsdale house is. I believe that's yeah. what it was. 
So according to Gateway Magazine, uh, the Save Our Sears Seas Foundation states that 70 people die annually from choking on a hot dog. There you go. Wow. 70 people. That's a, that's a room full of people. A year. <laughs> there you go. Damn. Uh, you only find out so, Sid, it's, you're going to have to wait even longer because, first of all, I do actually have, I have covered, oh my gosh, before there's like a video where he was at Harriman's Hospital. So if you haven't seen that already, go catch that out. But I want to, I don't want to bore everyone with you, just quickly, I was going to do when Omar and the fam goes to the Monroe house, because i got Joe right here who knows all about the Monroe house. And then the fam did a really, 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 really long respond. I, I, to start with, he just wrote a comment. And um, I was going to just, you know, respond to the comment. And then he did like over an hour rant about me on one of his lives. So it's good that. That video now has to be like a response to him, and I because I was just gonna like tack it on to the oh my gosh fam. So anyway, blah blah blah. Um, it, it will be there at some point, but you just have to be patient. There's a lot of videos I want to do, and I don't want to like end up like all my bloody videos being on the fam. Like I, I'm, I'm hoping after this response, like I'm I'm done now. I don't want to. I don't want like a giant load of back and forths. But he said a lot. Of <laughs> He <laughs> <laughs> sent me a road of book. <laughs> okay, thanks, paranormal seekers. Cheers, mate, guys. I'll have to have you on some other time. Yeah, he is a chatterbox, Josh. Yeah, he never shuts up. My God. <laughs> I think Crow's actually dying. Oh, fuck. <laughs> 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 okay, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I have probably already missed the comment about whoever wrote the thing about the uh, the the death pole of the world. I think it's the Omar. Okay, right. <laughs> anyone got any uh, any questions for anyone here? Question. I'm going to try and get down to the bottom of this so I can actually. Catch them when they come in. <clears throat> Damn. Not complaining. Thank you all, everyone, for your comment, uh, your live chat. Awesome. Cool. I I can't wait to see you in that mask at the Conjuring House. Oh my god. That is. <laughs> Don't you have another mask coming? Trigger on. Sorry. Don't you have another mask coming, Seg, from somebody else in the states? No, I'm not doing that. that guy was a weirdo. Oh man, <laughs> I want to I want to distance myself with that guy. He got he got really weird. Uh, I won't go into it, but the guy the guy's weird. You know what's uh, what's weird is I keep looking at your mask like that. I'm looking at your face, and because the eyes are looking <laughs> to the side, I keep like else what are you said, looking at. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what yeah that's what other people say. Like, is he? Uh, people say he just all sex always looking at the comments. <laughs> yeah. Also, though, uh, you look at the side. It made me laugh. Your your mask looks like the slipknot mask when you turn to the side as well. I said that in the comments. I said, I said oh, yeah. the side eye guy looks like he's trying out for slipknot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean with the right? Okay. <laughs> um, Mike Stash, thank you very much for coming a member. Welcome. Appreciate it. Um. Oh. From there, how do you deal with hate from a channel you debunk? I see Beardo's having Ghost Theory attacking. Him. Is Ghost Theory responded to Beardo already? Uh, they posted something about uh, they're getting tired of uh, debunkers coming at them or something like that. But specifically, uh, Beardo, and they're gonna they're gonna bring the fight to him. Ugh. Well, this is the thing. Like, it's only but like, I made a video about them two months ago, and then before that. It was all the shit they did with Purple. And what they did to Purple, they can go fuck themselves. Like that, you know what I mean? Like, just boo fucking who? You, like, you weren't bullied so badly that you, like, deleted your whole bloody... Ch uh, you know what? You know what? Um, let's not get into that. But, like... <laughs> oh, you're not, no one's above being debunked. If you make paranormal content and you claim that you see ghosts and you make a fucking... <laughs> 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 
thinking of filming ghosts, you're not above being debunked. Or at least an attempt or people asking legitimate Rooster. questions. They're not, they're not above it. Fucking like my haunted hotel, try this shit with me. And I can go steer you doing this shit with Beano. Go fuck yourselves. Careful, it's going to turn green. I have a fucking aneurysm. We're not going to know, though, because he's got a mask on. I know. <laughs> like, <laughs> kind of just sit there the rest of the I show. Like, he's quiet. You your speech or... <laughs> you know, oh, man. That's funny. Uh, I don't really... Uh, I mean... I don't have to deal with too much of this. I mean, I don't, cause I don't really go after the channels. I mean, you guys do a great job of that. I don't like, I don't do the, the YouTube channel, like watch and, and go through it. Um, I don't have to, which, cause you guys are doing an amazing job at this. Um, I get most of my hate from the people I write about. And when I write an article about them, um, that's when they get pissed off and like psychics, um, a lot of psychic mediums that I do investigate, that do make claims and i'm not i want a disclaimer i don't say all psychics and mediums are fake because i don't know um but the ones i have investigated are um and they claim to find missing persons especially when it comes to children that really is a trigger for me um or when they say that they they've solved the murder when they didn't um so i've, I've investigated some of them and i get uh letters in the morning saying that they're going to sue me. Um, and I have them framed. They get, they get in a frame and they go on my wall. Um, because again, I think we touched on it earlier. Like my stuff goes through legal. So I'm, they go over it with a fine tooth comb, make sure that I do everything right. And I have everything to back it up. Um, so I don't get, I do get hate and, and usually it's in like the form of the death threats, you know, the random emails that, that tell me, you know, I, they're going to kill me or I, they hope my family gets hit by a car. Um, like I've had an email saying, I hope your whole family gets hit by a bus and, and ha ha ha, uh, Jeez. like that. But like, I, I, it used to bother me in the beginning, you know, because that's like, what do you do? You know, you, tr you can try and track them down, but what do you do? Um, so I've, I've just ignored it. I don't, I don't worry about it. If you hate me, you hate me. You know, if, if you hate me, have a reason, you know, is it because I showed that the shit is wrong that you're doing? Then that's on you. It's not on me. It's on you. If I made a mistake, then by all means, you know, demonstrate why I made the mistake. Show me and I'll apologize for it. But otherwise, that's all on you. So I, uh, I, I remember Sylvia Brown telling a family. Oh. oh yeah, your son is dead. You know he's dead. Oh yes. And then, like weeks later, they find the kid alive and well. Oh, uh, that was um, that was the story of Amanda Berry. Um, Amanda Berry was the, I, I think that's the one you're talking about. Um, was she a was, boy, kid. but it could right. have been somebody else too. Okay, the the big famous one was Amanda Berry. She was a, a young girl. She was kidnapped, um, and she was gone missing for like ten years. Um, her captor kept her chained to a bed, raped her, um, got her pregnant. Uh, and, and the poor girl was chained to a bed watching on TV as Sylvia Brown was on Montel Williams. And the, the girl's mother had went on and asked about where her daughter was. And Sylvia Brown told her that she's dead and like no sympathy, nothing. Just like, Oh honey, she's dead. And, the, I mean, the mother was like in tears. She was broken hearted because she had been looking for so long. A couple years later, the mother died. And it was after she died that the oh. girl had escaped. She finally was able to escape and went to a neighbor's house, called the police, and she was found. Um, so you can imagine, like, she was chained to a bed watching this psychic tell her mother, right. like, she was dead. Oh, my God. Horrible, horrible. Yeah. This other one, though, it was a boy, <sighs> and they found the boy like with the kidnapper, and he was just hanging out like in the back of uh, the bed of the truck. I can't remember how the whole thing uh, unfolded, but the boy was alive. That's good. Good. 
it's it's sad. It's sad. It's sad when stuff like that happens. And and that's the kind of stuff that tr it triggers me, you know, like I, I, I can't stand that, you know, you're exploiting a, a child. It, it's one thing when you exploit adults, you know, cause you, you think adults should have some kind of sense of critical thinking and, and know, maybe pick up on a scam, but that's not always the case. I, to be honest, like people, a lot of people can be fooled, but when you, when you target children, like that's, you're a sick fuck. And, and I really can't stand that. So right. I, I will drop everything and that gets my full attention. Uh, yeah. And that's usually when a, a really in-depth article comes in that <laughs> usually has to go through a lot of legal because <laughs> I say a lot of shit when I'm angry. Um, not good. But yeah. Uh, guys, uh, Mike Stash here. Uh, thank you very much for the $10. I really appreciate it. Uh, as I read this, I'm going to say it the way I think everyone wants me to say it. Uh, I'm late to the party, so I don't know if anyone has asked, but are we ever going to get some Grim Reaper merch? <laughs> uh, yes. Okay. I've had so many people ask me this. First of all, my I, I, my merch store is crap right now. I've got to improve it. But <laughs> I have so the guy who did the artwork for the side eye guy. Um, I sent him an email this morning for me, my time, um, and. I, I, I want him to design something that, you know, I, what I've got, I want him to do like a much better version that's going to go on the back of a t-shirt or a hoodie. So, yes, that motion is in place. I will be getting some Grim Reaper merch in. Awesome. That's so cool. I won't buy it, but that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you should do a fanny pack as well. Hey, fanny packs are cool. I have one. <laughs> I, oh really? Nothing, I do. nothing to me. Nothing to me screams you're either American or Italian like a fanny pack. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny, what's in your fanny pack? It uh, well, I call it my booty bag first. <laughs> <laughs> that's much better. Yeah, but that's usually you know, when. Are you, I... are, just quick, are you guys aware what the Brits call a fanny? A bum? No. What? A vagina. A what? A vagina. Wait, you call what? it a, a booty? No, no, no. A fanny. Wait, a fanny. So you call a fanny, a fanny if you if you're in Britain and you're saying like oh uh, you, know, you say you say the word fanny, you're talking about a lady's front bum. Wow. Okay. So I didn't when know you that. guys say fanny pack to us, sounds a bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> You guys are so weird. That makes yeah, it funnier now. <laughs> so much funnier. One more fucking language. <laughs> yeah, when I used to wrestle back in the early 2000s, I'd see wrestlers all the time with fanny packs. And they're always filled with like dollar bills and shit, trying to sell merch and shit like that. And I'm like, <laughs> they they still make those things? Like, what the hell? It was like, what, early 90s, 80s, something like late 80s, early 90s or something like that? <laughs> I, I, so I use mine because like in, in the summertime when it gets really hot out i usually wear gym shorts gym sh yeah that too gym shorts and uh just a, a t-shirt so i don't want to have anything like gym shorts the pockets are everywhere it's like you know free balling i i don't want <laughs> my keys and stuff <laughs> flying around so i put a, a my my booty bag on and keep it around the back and it has my keys my phone my wallet so that's that's it it is a good place for moist towelettes as well oh i'm sure it is crow <laughs> <laughs> where you keep yours <laughs> are they scented <laughs> no not scented only <laughs> like uh, Unmoist, actually, only unmoist towels. Oh boy! I think, honestly, think that for the first time in like near an hour, I'm at the bottom of the chat. Awesome! Awesome! Uh, I, will say, I hope the Conjuring house is going to be cold because uh, it gets your face a bit sweaty. But then again, I've got no aircon in my house still, so the house is quite hot. <laughs> 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 So uh, I, I gather that when you're at the Conjuring House, you're going to be filming, right? Yeah. Wow. So have we still? Do we still have any idea if I'm allowed to film yet, Joe? Say that again. 
Uh, do we have any answers if I'm allowed to film? Nothing oh. yet. Um, I haven't heard anything back. That's seventeen more thousand dollars. Yeah, it'll probably be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You do it for a mere grand. Yeah. Wow. Um, no oh. thanks. No thanks. I'll no. Uh, put the mask on again in a little bit. I just want to take it off a little bit and let my face breathe. Is it getting very moist? <laughs> in that mask. Oh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't I don't want to I don't want to engage in you bro, when you say that <laughs> had, had I known about all the, the the crazy rules and the like the bullshit that was that's in place there I would have like you know what guys let's maybe go somewhere else <laughs> yeah that's that's a I lot mean, of money it is what it is now like I am looking yeah. forward to it I think it'll be exciting uh I'm still hoping we'll meet We'll get Co I'll get Cody Satori to like sign my mask. <laughs> <laughs> sign your hey, have them sign your shoes, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Fucking hell! I'll get some, I'll get some I'll white trainers shoes. just for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have them sign your shoes. I'll have them sign my feet. Oh my god! Signature sign Cody Satori shoes. Oh wow. <laughs> hey, can you sign this inside? I guys holding out fucking shoes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Uh, I'm gonna. That's gonna be interesting. I, I I can't wait to hear what what your experience is if if they are there. Um, and, and we don't have to talk about it now because I, I don't want to spoil anything. You know, no, no, it, it, it's fine. Um, I'm sure that they don't watch this over here, so <laughs> they might mind because they know my channel. They don't know his <laughs> channel. This is the but, thing they're gonna they're gonna obviously figure out. Oh, uh, you know, what? I don't want to say too. I, I shouldn't say too much actually. Before I shouldn't I shouldn't really say too much before we get there. <laughs> uh, I could say it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I. I mean, I, you guys are going there, and just on the the odd chance that somebody from there catches wind of this and and watches it, I don't want you guys to be like uh, kicked out or canceled because you said some stuff and you don't get a chance to be there. Um, uh, and that's. I mean, like we can rip it apart afterwards. <laughs> right. But there's a there's a lot of people out there like investigators out there who do want to get into more of the debunking thing and, and looking at like a lot of these other channels who are doing it. The thing is that they're afraid, one, they don't want the drama. Two, they're afraid that they're gonna get blacklisted from events and locations and stuff like that. And that sucks. And that I mean, that is a thing that can happen. Uh right. so I, I don't I don't blame a lot of them for not really stepping up and, and saying anything. I don't know if you've been paying too much attention to uh, Eric Vitale, but um, so he's he's got a he's got a hard on for Tony uh, Spera. Mm. Okay. Um, I mean, I like, I, I, sorry, just quickly, Amy. Like I've seen you like in the comments for a while, and I always have liked your comments. And for the longest time, I didn't have. I thought it'd be rude to sort of say to you. Is Wank your surname, or is it like a joke name? <laughs> your like YouTube username. I didn't want to, but I'm really glad you cleared that up. Wank is your actual surname. You must have got bullied so badly at school. Are you? Are you? But then again, are you American or British? Because in America, you don't use that word, do you? No. Yeah, we do. Wank? Well, you wank yeah. off all the time. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I think that's the first time I've used that word ever. Really? Really? Uh, wow. Yeah. And it's don't, huh. not something that I grew up with or anybody said around me. Uh, Mike Stash, yes, I'm going to be wearing that mask pretty much the whole time I'm in the Conjuring house and probably the Bel Air house. <laughs> it's going to be very yeah. much up to that. That one too. That's the plan. Oh, uh, that's because funny. There's uh, cameras all over that building. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. Oh, that mess is gonna smell. <laughs> yeah. It will. It already does. 
<laughs> I'm just going to take a little wandering outside to cool off. Yeah. Damn. Uh, not for much, but yes, America. Okay. So if you're American, maybe you you got away without getting tea. Oh, you, no, you, no. You sorry. British, you're, you're, that, that, that would be some of the hardest school years of any kid's life <laughs> with the name of Wank. Yeah. Bunch of us Wanks here. Had, Pennsylvania? Had, That's where I grew up. I, I grew up in Philly. Pennsylvania. I've never heard Wank. That's weird. I had a I had a oh, boss whose last name was Titsworth. No joke. Jeff Titsworth. Hmm. <laughs> hey, got to get a family member called Kerr. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's awesome. Uh, any other questions for anyone on my panel? No more for me. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I saw there was a few. I, I was trying to there's probably there's probably been tons that I've missed. I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. That. Probably. Probably. I'm very <laughs> unprofessional. <laughs> I, uh, I usually I mean this maybe is... just future reference. I, I usually tell when I do my live streams, I tell people to put a capital Q in front of the question. Uh, and that usually when I scroll yeah. through, it makes it much easier. It just, uh, I think, anyway, you look at it when you, it, it could just get hard when like the, the, the yeah. chat goes. Fast you got trying to get people, yeah. Because I try, I, tr I do try and get as many as I can. Uh, John, uh, let me thank you very much for the five British pounds. Great mask tag. I will put the mask back. I'll put, I'm going to put the serial killer mask back on next. Um, <laughs> it's like, you know what's interesting? When I, when, when, again, um, for those of you that missed it, Elaine Baker. Creepy Caboodle made those masks for me. She has a YouTube channel. She does all sorts of arts and crafts stuff. She does like, uh, you know, models. Uh, um, is it called dioramas? Is that what they're called? Where they, they kind of like, she creates like certain like very famous known haunted houses and locations. And I think there might be some horror movie scenes in there. Really, really good. Like genuinely quite amazing what she does. Um, so uh, keeping you awake here, am I crow? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I didn't, I'm, I didn't even hear that. Wow, my bad. Are you okay? You want a little nap? <laughs> sorry. Damn, I, I don't know if cool to say. Sorry about that. Uh, anyway, um, so <laughs> yeah, uh, if anyone, uh, some, one of my awesome mods will uh, put her uh, a link for her channel up. If you just want to go give her some, give her some love, give it, uh, give it, follow her, subscribe to her. She's she's great. Um, CRL has a question for Kenny. Um, Kenny, do you you think we humans could be considered energy? If so, uh, what happens to what happens to it after we die? In your opinion, so uh, we're we're not considered energy. We are biological beings. We take in fuel through food, um, also oxygen. Um, that fuels what we do. It, we take the potential energy in those things and we create it and convert it into uh, energy like heat. Um, we also power our muscles and our brain. All this is converted into uh, different kinds of energy within us to power our bodies. Um, when we die, we become that, that energy that we come out or, or that we produce, such as like heat, we produce heat. Um, it emanates off of us and that dissipates when we die. And also our organs start to break down and become food for other organisms. Um, and we become the potential energy for other organisms and dissipate into the environment. Um, so that's, that's a basic idea. That is, it's not my wheelhouse, um, but that's the basic idea of what's going on. It's I not like we're energy beings, um, because if, if you want to make that, and I'm not saying um, CLR, CRL, specifically but if you want to make that assumption then you have to designate what kind of energy are you talking about so we are basic biological beings and we take in potential energy we create uh what we need for it um and then we expel it uh and that, that's pretty much it that's a process so, so i i believe einstein might have said something like that. I think it was him. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but 
then somebody took his words and spun it like, well, even Einstein believed that we're energy and like all this other crazy stuff. I, I don't remember if it was him specifically or not, but there's a lot of things that people like will sit there and say, well, Einstein said this and then proved that there was ghosts. Like, no, he, he never did. Or Einstein believed in God. No, he did not believe in God. Uh, he, but yeah, it's, um, <clears throat> It's usually the I think it's the second law of thermo thermodynamics that people get wrong. Not necessarily wrong, but they don't say the whole quote. They usually say like, "Oh, even energy cannot be created or destroyed." Um, but they forget the last part, the saying it can only change forms, and that's what usually happens. It changes form. Um, like we take in food again, potential energy, and we transform it into something that. Would, will help our bodies. I don't know the technical terms, so I'm just I'm going on general uh, statements here. Um, but even like when you talk about photosynthesis, um, when you take light and oxygen and they convert it into the energy uh, that the plant needs to grow. Um, but all that still, it's a process. Um, it changes forms. It's constantly changing forms. And it doesn't just it, it's not like we're, it's not like what's that movie um, with the old people um, and the eggs in the pool. Oh, oh cocoon. Cocoon. Uh, cocoon. Cocoon. Yeah. Awesome. Freaking you? Movie. you know, it's not like we are energy beings inside of a meat suit. Um, that's oh, not, that would be my fucking uh, dream. Um, but uh, I, yeah, I mean, energy is like a kind of a, a buzzword. Um, and I'm not picking on, on you uh, who, who asked that question, but I mean, energy is like a buzzword because it's a CRL. Film. So many people are like, hell, it, the, you know, ghosts use their energy to do this and their energy affects the equipment. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, what energy? Is it like, are we talking radiation, thermal, uh, potential? Uh, what, what are we talking about here? Chemical energy? Right. Define it. And it, it, that's the problem. It's never defined. It's just a filler word. Um, so that's one of my problems with, with right. the paranormal community using that word. So one of, yeah, like, the, the issue that I have too is people sit there and say, oh, you know, I got battery drainage, guys. My battery is completely full, and now here it is. It's, it's almost dead. It's got to, you know, ghosts got to be using up this battery. And it's like, why would a ghost use a battery when it gets sick its finger in a fucking light socket? And get all the power it wants from there. Like, none of it doesn't make so yeah, it doesn't make point. any sense to me. Um, but it's like, yeah, guys, there's a lot of like, you know, there's efficiency and like a lot of other things at play: heat, cold. Uh, how old is the battery? Like, it, it, the first thing they want to run to is, oh, the ghost is taking energy from my batteries. Um. So, uh, Spirit Speak here asks. Question, how much does it cost for content creators to go to the Conjuring House and will Seg watch Cody uh, tap dance? So I don't think we should probably say just how much uh, it did cost, like the exact amount, but it's not bloody cheap. <laughs> it is, it is not cheap. Um, if they do the, the, the foot thing. I, I, I really want to watch Happy Feet do his thing. <laughs> yeah, if they, they want to do it, it'd be nice and just let them do it and just... So you yeah, guys no, can just I, witness it. I, I think this mask isn't going to help us and Joe's presence. But, uh, <laughs> let's see, let's see how that goes. my tally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another question from Amy. Wank. Uh, I have a video with something strange and I saw... Oh, with a surname. Like, and I swear is paranormal, but I don't want it public because my son, my young son is in it. Um, would any of you like to see it? How would I send it? Email? Yeah, like I'd love to see it. Send away. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Cool. Uh, you can you can send it or send the link to me. My email is k as in Kenny uh, Biddle b i d d l e at uh, where am I? Oh, Center for Inquiry dot org. Um, you can send it there if you want yeah, to. And... In my about section, the about section of my channel as well. Um, I will say one thing, because these masks are quite new, I think they were made and sent off, uh, I think the paint is still kind of messing with me a little bit. I think I'm getting a little bit high. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm seeing little things like dance across my cheek right now. Um, from the lovely one, Alice, a uh, question for Kenny Biddle. 
Would you consider yourself a dualist or a monist um, when it comes to the theory of mind? Uh, that's a good question. I got to look it up. <laughs> I, I don't know what that <laughs> means. Say, you guys are a lot smarter than me right now. I'm just going to go back to making fart jokes. <laughs> <laughs> me like memes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! Monism <laughs> is opposed to dualism, which holds that mental and physical realms are fundamentally different. Dualism is often associated with the doctrine of transcendence, which holds that there are separate realm for realm or being above and beyond the world. Wow, that's deep. That is deep. That's something to think about. Um, I'll get back to you next week. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta. I gotta go into that because i've never been asked that question and i i have to look into it before i answer <laughs> that's my answer there you go so just quickly, screen, are you saying this because the i'll say the other one is actually more comfortable now that i've worn this for a bit of time are you saying the other one is more creepy than this one because everyone else is saying this one's more creepy the other one is more comfortable I, I think you can make a horror movie with either one no this this is true yeah, I think Wait, she did right. a good job, though. She did a good job. Uh, you know, um, maybe uh, Spirit Talk, uh, Spirit Search Australia. Maybe that's. Um, I'm not going to spoil too much, but I am in talks about with Elaine ba Baker about other ideas for other masks. I'll leave it at that. Oh, um, I want a mask now. <laughs> We're arrogant to think uh, we know anything. We haven't been uh, self-aware for a blink of an eye in world history. Yeah. That's we deep. know ev every, yeah. We're arrogant to think we know everything. I know anything. I think, I think, sorry, we're arrogant to think we know everything. I think it's what, it's what uh, I mean, it's every, Yeah, everything would be a better fit there. Um. Has anyone questioned the ghost of uh, Crow? Do you want to take this one? Um, well, there, I think I think it's definitely fake. Um, there's actually a good documentary guy sound. Oh man, I can't remember the channel's name. The guy just did a really good documentary on the ghost of Crow, Maine. He actually thinks some of it's paranormal. I don't. I think it's all fake. But um, he uses very low quality um, cameras, and also he slows down the shutter rate. And then also, he does. He just does a lot of fake stuff. It's all fake, but there's a good, a good documentary out. I think Shapes done a couple of videos on it as well. Hmm. I've never That's watched it. Are the, the the video cameras? Are they like security cameras, like DVR systems? No, they're like uh, like like old school like film type. They're, they're, I've got what kind of they are to be honest with you, man, but. He uses a he uses also very low lighting. He'll put something in the window, like a like a sweater, and then pull it out of the window, like with a string or something, and it looks like there's like a demon in the the window. And it's <laughs> it's really it's really low quality, so it's it works to his advantage. I can slow the shutter down on my uh, Sony 4K camera. I can slow it down. Uh, same thing with my mirrorless when I do video. Um, hmm. So, uh, Kenny, one for you. Uh, is Kenny related to Connor Biddle from Paranormal Encounters? I am not. I am that not. Aware, no right? relation. Um, although, I mean, pretty badass last name. <laughs> uh, I get in with the Shatner mask. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, that's been yeah. done, though. That's been done. I... I I, now I just want to hang out somewhere with you, just wearing that mask <laughs> the whole time. Yeah, go to a bar. <laughs> yeah, just go to a bar. Be like, ignore him. It's okay. Yeah. He's, he's, he's got a problem. He's a, he's a can, can he go with us to the Bel, Bel Air house, or is he like banned from there? <laughs> Who? Who? Kenny. Who? Me? Bel Air? Yeah. I don't know. The Bel Air house? I've never been there. <laughs> You know, you want to where is it? Where is it? Um, Ohio. 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 How am I? How am I saying it? Ohio. Ohio is not the right way to say oh, it. Ohio. Ohio. 
Ohio. Ohio. Ohio. Ohio. Not Ohio. I'm a hoe. <laughs> I'm a hoe. What? Oh, fuck me. How do you fucking say it? <laughs> Ohio. Ohio. Okay. Ohio. There. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Uh, I mean, I would love if I have enough uh, notice. That would be cool. I'd come out. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I want to say it's like uh, early April. Um, I'll let you know. Joe's going to come join me, and uh, uh, Josh from Paranormal Seekers, I think, is going to come along as well. So it's going to be a bit of a smaller group than the Bel Air House, right? Um, yeah, I, I'll, I'll talk about that later time. But yeah, like I'm very much looking forward to meeting Kristen as well. Somebody getting like, are the cops coming to somebody's house here? What the fuck is going on? I keep hearing. Uh -huh. uh, they found Crow. <laughs> <laughs> About time. I called them. <laughs> I found them. I know where he is. <laughs> Go get him. Uh, Thumbnail. Sorry, Charles, uh, did you ask a question? I might have missed it. I'm scrolling up to see if I can find your question. <laughs> I figured out how to get a free cook at McDonald's. <laughs> did I take this, Joe? Yeah, I, I, I did. I did it. <laughs> like what you do is <laughs> you go. Go ahead, girl. Yeah, go through drive through. Usually, have else is busy, right? Because they're three dollars a pop now, man. Like when they're super busy, like get your food. I'm like, hey, like, oh, hey, sorry. Um, can you add a coke to this meal? I forgot to add a coke. It's like really busy. They have to like go to the other side to do the register, and they're like, you know, like, can I just pay you cash? And like, oh no, go ahead. It's okay, man. Here you go. <laughs> you like, cheap motherfucker. <laughs> How much is the it's like they went from a dollar to three dollars, dude. That's that's a lot. So I don't do it all the time, but it has worked like a seven to ten I ratio. Like I think. I feel like you do it every time. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, so I found your question here, Charles. Does, do any of you think we have a soul? I, I've never really understood what a soul <laughs> is. There's certain things like that. We, we certain words I feel get thrown around, and I actually don't have an actual definition of what it's supposed to be. It weighs seven I mean, ounces, doesn't it, Kenny? That's bullshit. That's a bullshit study. <laughs> hey, look, but, but seriously, whatever came of that? Did they, they find out it wasn't exactly seven ounces? It was the twenty-one grams experiment. Okay, that's right. Um, and and they didn't. It was a it was a really bad, poorly uh, thought out experiment where they took, I believe, it was like eight or nine patients that were terminally ill, uh, and they were waiting for the time of death. They would place them on this balanced uh, uh, stretcher that would weigh them, but it wasn't a, a small enough small enough scale. Um, and I think most of the patients were actually rejected from the study or actually taken out because for one reason or another, the 21 grams, I think, only came from one patient. And it just it just blossomed into this idea that because they couldn't find anything wrong with that one patient that at the time of death uh, it they seem to have lost 21 grams and i think it was over time it lost some then it gained a few ounces and then lost some more and they they came up with 21 grams and it wasn't actually 21 grams they actually had it in ounces uh but it was uh transferred into grams later on um, and put out, but the study itself, if you read up on it, it was horrible. Um, it was, it was never repeated because it was deemed unethical. Um, but it was just a horrible study and the controls were really bad. The scale was awful. When you look, when you actually look at the sketching for the scale, they, they had, when you use props here, they basically had a bed like this and they had it stationary, stationary on one end. And then the other end was on a scale, like a big floor industrial scale. Um, and that's how they claimed 
to balance it at each time. And I think like even one of the patients was taken out of the study afterwards after they died because they weren't sure if they calibrated it right. So it was just very, very poor study all over. Um, and it has never been done again. And even if you, I mean, feel free to look it up. You'll see the results that they did get were inconsistent. Um, but they latched onto that one number. I don't, re I don't recall exactly why they latched on to the 21 grams, but that's what it's been known as ever since. Um, and it's horrible study. Horrible. Right. Uh, just before I read that, your, your question here, Scottish Pride, uh, this one made me laugh. Get a Steve mask. <laughs> uh, anyway, maybe that's just me and him that buy that point. Um, oh, Steve. <laughs> um, anybody, why? And this, is, this is a legit question. Uh, why are there haunted houses everywhere, but the whole sections of highways, they probably get countless of accidents and deaths and all the rest of it. I mean, the thing is, you do, he like, I have heard of haunted roads. Like, that, I know that is a thing, like, haunted highways and haunted roads. But considering I would think over, you know, God knows how many years, like, the majority of roads have been around, I think most roads have probably seen some level, especially big major roads, some level of death. I just, I'm but it comes back to that question, isn't it? It's like, one minute, it doesn't matter you don't haunt necessarily the place where you died. It's the place where you grew up and lived or somewhere something traumatic happened or dramatic happened. Or sometimes it's a cemetery. It's just whatever fits the narrative. Um, uh, first off, who the fuck is going to like investigate a highway? Hey guys, let's go investigate a fucking highway. And yeah. Uh, hey, up. hey, you know, there's going to be people that'll do it. Oh, no, thank you. you. Know. Cheaper um, than the Conjuring House. <laughs> you, 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 I, well, I don't, it depends on who's paying the hospital bill. Um, but uh, you know, <laughs> um, then the whole thing with like uh, he was talking about the ocean and stuff like that. Josh Gates, uh, they did a shipwreck. They investigated a shipwreck. And they took a digital recorder down there and a plastic baggie, you know, all sealed up and stuff like that. And claimed he got EVPs. I, it's a television show. So. Did, did, did they really investigate? <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, I'm using the I'm using the words that they would use. You know, I know, I know. TV guys, this is one of the biggest bloody can of worms question you're going to find find here. So if we can answer this quickly, because we've all kind of, especially you, Joe. Have any of you had a paranormal experience? Brief. And before I do that, I just want to also say uh, thank you very much, Kaza, for the five gifted. I really appreciate it. You're 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 just awesome, Kaza. You're just awesome. So yeah, paranormal encounters. Joe, go first. I believe all I have. That's all I'll say. I believe that I have. I can't prove it, but I I believe. That's it. How okay, so Joe's a yes. Go. I, I felt pressure in my belly button at a uh, abandoned Denny's one time. Man, right, he was worried about me. Right, how, how did that? How did that? Like, you know, how, how did that That's, manifest? I'm not. I, I think it was somebody trying to insert something into my belly button at an abandoned Denny's. I'm not sure what it was though. So, That's I got okay, Neil. Okay, <laughs> okay, Neil. <laughs> uh, Kenny. No, I have not. Uh, I, I won't go on about it because it's it would go on, but I believed I something happened when I was a kid, but uh, I try I debunk that as much as I do any of my videos, and I there's plenty of logical explanations of what it could have been before I arrive at ghosts, but this is the thing when you actually see it and it actually happens to you, it is it's not as easy just to sort of go, ah, oh, it's all bullshit. You know what I mean? Like, and that's kind of where I might be contradicting myself with some of the things in the channel and all the rest of it. But like, seriously, when it does happen to you, um, it's it's hard to not, to get that out of your head. That's how I put it. It's hard to kind of like, and I think that's when it comes down to a lot. And also for me anyway, like I, this happened to me when I was like 12 or 13. That was a big part of 
like my teen years or my twenties or my th- that stays with you, and it almost mm. to an extent can, can become a bit of your identity that you this happened to you, you think about that all the time. So there's but when the penny drops and you realize it it wasn't what you thought it was for so long of your life, it's hard to let that go. For whatever reason, maybe that just be like your belief system, maybe that just be stubbornness, whatever that is. It's hard to just sort of let go of what I thought happened to me may not have been what I thought happened to me. Right. I I had a a similar, and I'll try and make it brief. I know you're trying to do it quick, but similar. I I, I went on too. Everybody be brief so I can talk. I, I I had a similar uh, struggle when I, I left my faith, um, left my Christianity, uh, Catholicism, because I was so scared. You know, that was part of my being. That was part of my personality. And when I started stepping away from religion, it really, it I struggled with it because it was like, this has been my life. This is all I've known. And this is my community, too. And now I'm starting to doubt it. And I had to take little baby steps um, until. You know, I realized like, oh, shit, I didn't burn uh, when I didn't go to church. Wow. Like (laughs) my mom would tell me, like, you're going to you're going to be punished if you uh, don't go to church. And I didn't go and I went to the playground instead and nothing happened. So little things like that started. But yeah, uh, until I I was fine. Cool. Uh, So. Thank you. <laughs> Just real quick. Jesus Christ. What is that? I'm what the hell is that? Have you, got a, have you got a donkey in that room with you? <laughs> oh, your mic even. Dude, stop trying to push it. It's not going to fit. <laughs> <laughs> no means no. <laughs> did, did, you, did you like? Did you have a bad experience with... Um, being, you know, going to church and 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 at the point in time, like being a Christian, like, like was your fa- would you say your family was pretty hardcore? I mean, no, no, my, my mother, she she was. She, I mean, both my parents are alive. Um, my mother was devout Christian, devout uh, Catholic. My father was not. Um, he was he was uh, I think Methodist or, or something like that, but not practicing, not any kind of like involved like that. So there was that disconnect, and I was like, well, he doesn't go to church, but he went on like Christmas. He would go with the family. Um, my mother was the one that was really strict, and it it was kind of like that guilt trip that you know that that we I'm sure we've all seen it that Catholic or Christian uh, guilt trip every time you didn't want to do something it was like God's watching or if you don't go to church like even when I was really sick like with the flu and I couldn't walk I was getting a guilt trip for not going to church Um, I know all about that yeah and besides I just I thought it was boring I really every time I sat in in church and listened to the priest I had questions Um, through high school I went to a, a grade school and Catholic high school. And I had questions and I spent a lot of time in the principal's office because I asked questions. Um, and that left a bad taste in my mouth. Cause I was like, well, why do I do this? Why do I have to do that? Why? I don't understand. You, and, usually and going that, to Catholic school is a bad taste in your mouth. <laughs> Sorry. I couldn't reject that. I was like, I couldn't, I couldn't miss that one. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, just, not here to, that, that's uh, crows. Uh, <laughs> that crow, crows, opi- crows jokes do not represent the rest of our opinions. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good night, crow. We'll talk to you later. <laughs> any, 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 any Catholics on here want to address any of their kind of like, well, I just say like anger towards anyone. Crow's email will be in the description. <laughs> Uh, yep. Yeah. Um, Amy, Amy asked another question. I've never heard of this place. Uh, I live right down the road from Demon of uh, Brownville, which sounds. Now that I read that out loud, I'm <laughs> you wore the brown story. pants. Uh, uh, Rob, have you guys ever heard of it? Demon of Brownsville? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it could be. I just now that I read it, I had to read it out loud. 
Uh, thank you very much, Dark Hello, for your uh, your becoming a member. I really appreciate it and welcome. Thank you very much. Um, is one for Crow. I just watched a video on um, astroph astrophysics saying astrophysicists saying uh, UFOs are the fallen angels, real but not physical. But who knows? Uh, but who knows that what is true? They are attached to people that. They they are attached to people in occult practices. I've what? heard a lot of people say, like a lot of like Christians say. Oh, they say that's what aliens are. They're they're they're, they're, they're fallen demons. angels. Yeah, they're they're oh. de essentially right. demons. Yeah, I've heard a lot of Christian people say that. Um, a lot of people who are like really into conspiracy theories will say that too. Oh, what you're seeing in the sky, those are demons. Look what the Bible says. You're going to see all these things in the sky and yeah, I'm just like, whatever. I'm an oddball Christian. I don't believe in all of that shit. Uh, but, uh, I mean, like, really? That's, there, oh, was, there was cool so much movies. so much wrong with that statement. <laughs> there was just so much astrophysicists saying that UFOs are fallen angels. It's just, I, 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 I'm, I've never I'm, heard ask them say that. Wow. I've never. I know Christians have and conspiracies like hardcore conspiracy, conspiracy oh. theorists. But wow. Do you like that? Do y'all real quick? Do y'all like that astrophysicist? Uh, what's his name? The dude. He's always on TV. Uh, wears the glasses. Who? Tyson. Yeah, yeah. What do you think about him? Uh, I I've met him in person. I've had no the, shit. Uh, yeah, he was um the the conference that we put on in Vegas every year. Uh, it's called SciCon. Um, last year he was one of our. Uh, actually, last year, year before, <coughs> year before he was one of our uh, <coughs> keynote speakers, and I got to spend a couple hours with him. Um, oh wow! Talk and and run stuff by him and. Uh, we had an interesting conversation. Like he, one of the cool things was that, like, he was like, "I explained what I did," and he's like, "Well, good." Um, he took my number, and he's like, "I'm putting you in my phone because if I ever have a ghost question, I'm going to call you." I said, "Cool, cool. I appreciate that." Um, That's awesome. He's nice. He's a nice guy. Um, I, I know some people have problems with him, but I think he's a nice guy. I think he's very intelligent. He is. He, the way he's when he speaks um and when he writes too because i have uh his books here um very elegant writer and i i really like that i really appreciate an elegance when you write um he doesn't talk down to you he encourages you um and this again this is personal experience with him and, and watching young people come up and talk to him and ask him questions that he's probably been asked over and over again and he was very patient and uh, instructive he's and that's what I, I, I like. He's passionate. He like he. Yeah. What I like. I, I don't feel like. I feel like there's not enough scientists to quite do this. That they their one of their big goals is to educate dumb fucks like me about things that I don't quite understand. And he is that kind of thing. Is like, like if you can't explain something to uh, a, a, a child or an idiot or someone who doesn't understand it, then you don't understand it yourself. Right. Um, and I think he's very good at breaking things down. So I can kind of like, my mind gets blown sometimes when I hear him, but I'm like, I can sort, I can follow and understand what he says. And I think we need more scientists that will just make the effort to address, like go on Joe Rogan's podcast or go on, like, you know, where they can, and then just address people and say, explain, hey, this is what we know. This is the general consensus of the scientific community. And I know, again, I know he's kind of controversial and all the rest of it. I know there's like, People like love him or hate him, kind of thing. But I, I, if nothing else, I think that deserves respect to really making the effort to educate, yeah, the masses. So not not just within your like scientific circles, but like on a far broader scope. I think that that needs to be right. done more. And and also imagine, I mean, it, like you guys all speak out. You do YouTube videos. You speak out against like these other ghost channels, and you 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 debunk some stuff you also explain like why something doesn't work now imagine that worldwide scale you know like not a few thousand people or maybe tens of thousands of people that watch you but millions of people and 
escalate and, and multiply the hate that you get. 100%. I mean, exponentially. Yeah. yeah. Right. And that's what's going to happen. If you don't have like one thing he says, you're going to bitch about him. Um, I, I liked him before. In all honesty, I, I did like what he did. I Again, I read his books. I've read his work. So I can comment on his work. If you haven't read his books, then don't comment on the books because you, you yeah. have no place to comment. Um, but then meeting him in person and getting that personal experience. And he didn't know me from shit. You know, like he didn't have to treat me with respect. He could have just blew me off, but he, he was nice and professional. And I, I totally appreciate that. Cool. A lot uh, of us scientists are kind of smug, you know, and yeah, kind of sometimes, things, yeah. like, I had a doctor was like that. Oh, yeah, and I told no, him, like, yeah, you're yeah, I, 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 I know what you mean by that too. Uh, <laughs> Peter X paranormal. Thank you very much uh, for your two months. Uh, hello panel and everyone in chat. Uh, we got Jane Glover here with a question for Kenny. Kenny, what are your thoughts on Killian photography? Curlian. What's that? Curlian for, uh, photography. So it's it's a form of photography that got some attention because people started doing... I think they started messing with the images. It's basically you, you put a, an object... You're photographing a coronal discharge of an object uh, when you apply an electrical charge to it. And I think that's what most people don't understand. Um, they think you're taking like special film and you're photographing an object and you're getting this aura and it became really popular because there were some people putting out images where they would take a leaf and claim that they ripped off half of it, do this process, take an image and the missing half would be in this image. Um, but what was found was that people were putting like a leaf down on a plate. And they were putting it down, taking a photo of it, and then tearing off a piece, and then doing another photo of it. But when you're applying that that electrical charge, the moisture, the subtle, because there is a little bit, the subtle imprint from that leaf that was there, the part that was torn off, is still on the plate. And that gets charged and uh, presents a coronal discharge when you apply power to it. So they were getting these images, and it was like, oh, wow, look at this, look at that. You know, it's, it's, there's a phantom limb, you know, of a leaf, but it's not, it was actually there. Um, it was just a mistake. It's really cool photography. I've, I've never done it myself. Um, I would like to, but I don't have the equipment to do that right now. Uh, but it's a really cool uh, process. Um, but there is a oh, lot I to know. it and, uh, huh? No, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm listening to you. Yeah, it's a really cool process. And uh, I think it started in like 1930s, I think. I think that's when it started, 19, like 39 or 1940, something like that, when it was it was accidentally discovered because somebody applied a, a, um, a charge to something and photographed it and was like, oh, shit, look at this. It's got an aura. And yeah, it's the power. It's discharge coming off the object because you can do it with like uh, biological things like leaves, uh, but you could also put a key. A metal key or a coin or something like that, and you'll get the same kind of thing. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. That's the first. I think that's the first I've heard of. I, I some people it. like it, it's pronounced uh, Curlian, but some people say like Carillion, um because they don't pronounce it right. But I, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing. It. I'm I'm saying what it, it looks like. But Curlian uh, photography is it's really cool. It, it's it's almost like. It almost looks like you're looking at space. If you're like, if you do this with like a coin or something like that, it looks like you're looking out at like a black hole, uh, like a like an eclipse or something like that, with this big corona discharge with different colors coming out of it. It's really really cool. Um, Mike Stash, thank you so much for the twenty gifted. That's crazy. Thank, mate. You've Whoa. been you and a today. <clears throat> wow. You. So twenty. That's so cool. Um, again, guys, I'm trying to get through these questions as quick as I can. I'm sorry for anyone whose comments or questions I'm missing. Um, Wisdom, do you have any theories on incomprehensible dimensions? What's incomprehensible dimensions? I can't comprehend that? that question. <laughs> <laughs> what? I, incomprehensible I don't know what I mean. not incom Is that like... Like multiple dimensions? Is that what we're talking about? I don't know what that. I don't, I've never heard of incomprehensible dimensions before. Um, was 
Brian Cox, a keyboard player in a band. Yeah, he, he was a, he was in a band, wasn't he? He was in a rock band or a pop rock band. Uh, so, higher dimensions are incomprehensible because there isn't enough knowledge to describe them. Okay. Oh, so is that I just the that, idea yeah. of the, the dimensions we don't hmm. understand? Is that what that means? Uh, uh, okay, if, we, if, we, if the question is, like, do we just believe in intimate? I don't know. I, I, I've got nothing to say it's true. It's one of those things where it's like, I know there's probably a lot smarter people out there who understands quantum physics, obviously a lot better than a dumbass like me who just like, makes fuck noises like over green ghost theory and, Yeah, and like... Yeah, it's, it gets all crazy too. But like, also and done with that stuff, is like, I, it's a bit like everything. It's, it's, it, I understand that this is, a, this is a difficult thing where you say, oh, I can't see ghosts. Oh, you can't see gravity. It's like, yeah, but gravity has like continued bloody results where we know it's a fucking thing. You don't have to see it because it's it, it has it, the rules of gravity are evident around us all the time. That's not the case with ghosts. And it's, I've kind of got that a little bit when it comes to like multidimensionals. Whereas I can't see it. I've got no proof to say that it's a thing. So do I say I think it's real? Like, I don't know. I enjoy it. smart people for me that think that there's a there's a possibility that it is a thing. But right. it's a bit like when people say that we're in a matrix and it's like yeah, I think Neil deGrasse Tyson himself came out and said like the possibility is that we're more likely to be in a matrix than not. I might be misquoting him, but I'm pretty sure he said something along those lines. Um and I'm like, I mean I would say no because I've got no, but that's the whole point of a matrix. We're not supposed to know if we're in one. If we're in the Matrix, I'm pretty pissed that I haven't figured out how to fly yet. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's uh, bullshit, man. That's bullshit. And if we're in a simulation, oh, least, give us hoverboards. Yes, give us hoverboards. And if we're we're in a simulation, somebody needs to start using some fucking cheat codes on me because I need like you know, like infinite money cheat codes and shit. Like, come on, player, really? Yeah. Cool. Uh, question for Kenny. Uh, what is your take on HARP? H A A R P. So I I I'm I know about it. I'm not very familiar with it. It is the high frequency active or rural research program. Um, it studies the ionosphere, um, and it's it looks like it's under controlled conditions where they uh, they have an antenna, a high power high frequency transmitter that can excite. Uh, a small portion of the ionosphere, uh, which I believe is about 40, 40 to 50 miles above the earth, 50 to far for 50 to 400 miles above the earth's surface. So now I'm cheating because I'm reading off the, the actual page yeah. uh, and it looks like they study it and it looks like it's uh, studied under controlled conditions. So, I mean, I'm all about learning more about oh. what's going on. I mean, the more we know about our planet, the better. Uh, especially the atmosphere around it. Right. So the thing with that whole harp thing is people believe that it's like a weapon, that it can change weather and do all this crazy shit. And I remember watching Joe Rogan had a television show called, I think, I can't remember what it's called. There's your problem, Joe Rogan. And, uh, well, no, 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 no. Um, he's like, this guy was claiming that this the thing could do that. It could change the weather and stuff like that. So Joe Rogan had him take it to the test, and Joe Rogan like just completely shit all over this dude. Like this is bullshit. Like your experiment was a failure. Um, I think that maybe what they were getting at with with the whole harp thing is the conspiracy theory behind it. Okay, that'd be interesting. I mean, they have contact information and a phone number here. Maybe I'll call them and see if I can get someone. A rep to come on to uh, my Friday night show and talk about it because oh, that would be interesting, you know. Like that, I mean, it, stuff like this. It, it fascinates me to see the conspiracy theories that go with it. It's like, oh, you got this big thing. You're you're experimenting up and high in the atmosphere. It must be a secret weapon that can, yeah. uh, you know, control the weather and it can take out countries and small cities and stuff like that. And cause earthquake. I mean, if if it was something like that. I doubt they would put it out and make any note of it in the public. You know, like why, why even raise suspicion? Why even put it out there and say, Oh, look, we're doing this and bring attention to yourself. If you want to have a weapon like that, you don't do it in front of the public. 
You right. don't put information about uh, about the whole program out on the public. Um, it's in, it looks like an interesting topic, something that I would love to read up on and, and get into, but I don't see anything dangerous about it. Um, I mean, what's not? I mean, we have a large hydron uh, collider, you know, and everybody thought that was going to cause a black hole in, in, in <laughs> on the Earth, and we're still here. Right. We're still fine. Yeah. Um, I remember all that. All these, all these theories, like I understand the the, the question and, and why people will ask, but yeah, there's there's information out there. Like, look at it. Don't don't rely on conspiracy theory sites because that's just going to fear monger. That's going to promote those fears and make it even worse. Look at start at the beginning. You know, like I did, go to, directly to their site and start looking it up and see what they're about, and then go from there. Problem is, like conspiracy theories are more exciting. That's why people are kind of yeah. drawn to them in a big way. Um, That's why paranormal is- challenges. It's why paranormal cha- uh, channels get s- so many subscribers, and we yeah. don't. Yep, absolutely, uh, guys. I'm going to wrap it up in about five minutes. Uh, yeah, I know yeah. uh, there's a whole bunch of um, questions and all the rest of it. I can maybe squeeze in a couple more. So uh, again, apologies for anyone who's missing, but. If you asked a question that I didn't read out, or if you've got another one, just uh, I throw it in the chat now, and uh, I'll try if we can maybe do like a quick fire question. Um, there we go. Uh, Spirit Search Australia. Do you believe uh, there are things out there that just can't be explained in the paranormal field that can't be debunked with a scientific explanation? <laughs> I think I feel that's one for uh, for for Kenny to start with. <laughs> Do you believe that there are things out there that just can't be explained in the paranormal field? Well, I I see two questions here. So the first question is: Do you believe that there are things out there that just can't be explained in the paranormal field? Um, I would actually change that by the paranormal field and say yes, because that's usually the go-to. Like. Un- saying things are unexplained or unexplainable is a is a, a quick go to explanation um, that is common. Uh, there's a lot of things that are presented as evidence of the afterlife and paranormal from the paranormal community that can be explained, um, and it's it really depends on how deep you research it and if you're willing to set aside your biases um, and really look at something fair. Uh, oh, can you put that back up? Oh, sorry. Wait, I'll find it. It's all right. Um, the second go. one, thank you. Because I, I go I go question by question. And I, yeah, I, I don't, yeah. yeah. Um, and then when it comes to things that can't be debunked with a scientific explanation. Um, so that that's kind of confusing there because, I mean, you're looking for an explanation, a, a legitimate explanation for something. And if it's if it's believed to be something paranormal in the beginning, but you eventually find a, a science based explanation for it, um, when you debunk something, understand that the definition of debunk means to take the falseness out of a statement. That's how it's defined. So if something is believed to be paranormal and then you investigate and find a logical explanation for it, then you took the falseness out of that first statement. Um, so I think there's going to be a scientific explanation for just about everything. And when we see scientific explanations, sometimes it's, it's as simple as, well, you know, it, it was, it was just, uh, the wind, you know, like there was wind coming in the window, it created pressure and it closed that interior door. Uh, you know, it slammed it shut or it made it open slowly. Uh, it's still a scientific explanation, but it's a very simple one. So her keys I, I, missing. Yeah, keys go missing, you know, and it, you know, you just lost them. You misplaced them. That's that's what it is. Um, or you know, a mouse came out of the wall and. <laughs> and just just because you can't explain it and can't debunk it, still doesn't mean that it's paranormal. We just don't know yet. We we right. just we don't have the answer yet. Right, and that goes back to the idea that if you don't find the source. Then you don't know what caused it. You don't want you don't know what caused that experience. So you have to keep looking. You can't just look for like 30 seconds or five minutes and say, oh, well, you know what? 
must be a ghost because I can't find anything that explain this. That's that's not doing science. That's not doing an investigation. That's giving up and taking the easy road. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> uh, one more question, guys, before we uh, call it a, question, a day no. or a night for you guys. Uh, well, thank I'm you, six, uh, real Joe quick. and Penny. Oh, go on. Real, real quick, I got to jump off here. I got to get my son to work. I got to go pick him up. Okay. Uh, so. All right. Thanks, Joe. Hey, Joe. Thanks. See fun. you, Joe. Right, everyone, go check right. out Joe Fatali, uh, Entity 7 Paranormal Joe Fatali. Um, I'm going to be with him at the Conjuring House. Uh, you know, he's a friend here and uh, he's a good guy. Go check his channel out. Uh, I'm I imagine that. most of the people in this chat are um, probably already subscribed <laughs> to him. But uh, one, one more, one more question. Uh, wait a minute, do I just find one? Yeah, uh, yeah, I've probably skipped so many or they've gone by me. Let's see, let's go down the bottom here. Just one question. One more, one more question, guys. Just shoot it our way in the meantime. Or, I don't know, do I have a question for you? I don't really think so. <laughs> <laughs> isn't anything that isn't, isn't anything that isn't considered <laughs> paranormal? No. I mean, you get an abnormal. Um, uh, we need some lab equipment to check property so we can jump to another solution because we need an explanation of some kind. Okay, here we go. Last question, guys, from CRL. Kenny, I can't even say that word. I'm too dyslexic for that. <laughs> I'm not even trying to say it. Secret, synchronicity. What's, what is that? Uh, the simultaneous occurrence of events which appear significant significantly related but have no discernible causal connection um so i mean this is there's a good example that i use um and it's usually like hey you know if i'm upstairs if i'm doing my business in, in the the restroom and i flush the toilet or the loo whatever you whatever you call it um and the doorbell rings at the same time does that mean that when I flushed the toilet, it made the doorbell ring and it doesn't. Um, so just because things happen at the same time, doesn't mean one caused the other. Uh, and, and we have to understand that. So like if you are in a, a haunted location and say one of your beeping uh, light up devices goes off because you asked a question, is anyone here? Like it's good timing, but does that mean that there's actually like some kind of spiritual entity in that environment that's made that happen. No, it doesn't. Um, you would have to, you would have to like have the exact same, you have to put the same question forward and have the same results. Over and over. Times, I would even entertain it. And you also have to put controls on it. You know, like so many, yeah, so many to, of these monitors as well. You need to be like, you know, you, I, I don't, I, I, I need a third party in there to monitor every, all your claims. There's, there's a lot. There's right. a lot to, to be said for a lot of that stuff. Uh, yeah. With that being said, guys, I think we're going to call it a day here. We've gone up to we're nearly uh, two hours, 25 minutes. Um, Joe Fatali, uh, Entity 7 Paranormal Joe Fatali was in earlier. He just had to leave. We have Crow Judas right here. Uh, please go check out his channel. He did a very recent video, actually. Um which is doing pretty well off his take on the Cody and Satori interview with Project Fear. Uh, please go on his channel and and, and check that out. Um, you know, uh, he, he did a really good job on that. It's really funny as well. And of course, Thank you. got... You're very welcome. Don't, don't interrupt me again. Um, and we've got... Uh... <laughs> It's so funny. Like, the only reason I know you're laughing is because I see your shoulders going. going <laughs> yeah. Don't interrupt me again. <laughs> okay. That's scary. Okay. I won't, sir. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> so Michael Myers right there. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, that's great. I love it. Uh, and we have uh, the, all <laughs> we got the awesome Kenny Bill here as well. He has his own channel. Go check him out. You know, he's got like old people. Kenny, Kenny's slumming it talking to us guys. Kenny's like been around, man. Like Kenny's like Kenny, <laughs> Kenny talks. Like, Kenny, Kenny meets Neil deGrasse Tyson and gets interviewed for like proper fucking publication. Like, like you know, Kenny, Kenny's Kenny's slumming it with us, and we appreciate him for it. Did I mention I also hung out with Bill Nye? We no, chilled. you didn't. We chilled. Nye just bragging. Yeah, Bill Nye, the science guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally. No, I mean, no, I I love interacting with Jason everyone. Paul's for you, paranormal um, yeah. lovers out there. He's he's you know he's slumming it with us. He could be going hanging out with his celeb friends whenever he wants. Whatever. Yeah, right. I go home <laughs> and just sit on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> I go work all day and I go home, sit on the couch, and I watch YouTube video. I watch you fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, also want to say thank you, thank you everyone that uh, gave me super thanks and members. I really appreciate every single one of you. Like it's been really, really great. Thanks everyone for their comments. Thank you everyone for your questions. Thank you so much to my mods because the mods have been on top of it as always. Uh, I really appreciate, that, especially one I least there. Thank you so much. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. I'm hitting the mute button now. <laughs> <laughs> so awkward, dude. I I think I want you to come on one of my shows and just sit there, sit there, yeah, just sit, there. <laughs> sit there, and just stare and like like that. Never it's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> oh my you god! Done? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go now, guys. <laughs> Good see you, y'all. <laughs> I will clip those fucking wings. <laughs> oh my God. Anyway, thank you very much, everyone. Really appreciate it. I had a really good time here. Crow, shut the fuck up before I can actually end it. <laughs> Giddy about lost that. Oh, my God. Jesus. Uh, I appreciate everything. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I get, like, get used to this mark. Because this is like, this is where I'm going to do my mark. The, the, the lives are going to be with the mask on now. On. That's the idea. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone. Go subscribe to these guys. And, uh, you know, all the best. Cheerio. Ta-ta.